10 years after simian flu wiped out much of the world's homo sapiens, genetically enhanced chimpanzee Caesar and his ever-growing band of followers have established a thriving colony just outside of San Francisco. Meanwhile, a small band of human survivors emerges, which forces Caesar, as leader, to grapple with the dual challenge of protecting his people and re-establishing a relationship with the remaining human population. The latter being Caesar's Secret Wish. Welcome to another feature presentation of Midnight Double Feature, and on this episode, we'll be covering 2014's Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, directed by Matt Reeves. Oh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Midnight Double Feature. Uh, here we are covering 2014's Dawn of the Rise of the Planet of the Apes of the uh, Sour Patch Kids or whatever it's called. Uh, with me, the uh, uh, Maurice to my Caesar. There we go. Because, uh, of course, I'm Caesar. No, you can be Rocket. You can be Rocket. Are you saying my head looks like a bedpan? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I, I'm not saying you look like that ape, but if you had to look like one of the apes up there, <laughs> that's right. That's racist. <laughs> no, that's it racist. would. I, 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 in all honesty, he's red and he's got a huge fucking head. That's me. Yeah. That's not you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's gonna well, end look. Up being at least, me. at least, none of us look like Cobra. So, <laughs> yeah. Thank Christ. Uh, anyway, well, I could guys. have been Silverback the gorilla, but I don't think he's got a name. Oh, no, I don't. He's just fucking badass. Uh, Guys, thanks for joining us for this episode of This Is Your First Time uh, 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 Picking Up Midnight Double Feature. Thanks for listening to us. We appreciate it. Uh, We are going to go through this movie sequentially. We're not going to talk about it scene by scene, but we're going to break it down in chunks. Uh, We are going to spoil it. There is an E on this motherfucker for a reason. And also uh, stop by and check out our Patreon. It's patreon.com slash midnight double feature. You get access to the green room for $5 a month. You get two extra episodes. I think we're up to like, I don't know, 60, 50, 60, 70 episodes now or something. Eight, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you get all that just as soon as you sign up. Um, and it helps us out a lot. We're independently funded. Uh, we don't really have anybody uh, supporting the show besides you guys at the green room and the, the, those who spread the word and uh, rate and review us. And we always really appreciate that. And if you want to find any of our socials, uh, you can check the show notes uh, down at the bottom. But <clears throat> um, I do. I do want to mention before we do move on from Patreon. Um, we did cover rise of the planet of the apes on mm-hmm. the green room. So, um, you know, some of the conversation f- leading into Dawn might sort of like trickle over because, you know, obviously they're, you know, that's the first film in the, sure. in the trilogy. Um, so if you do, you know, if we are making references to, you know, that episode, you can go and listen to it uh, in the green room, patreon.com forward slash midnight double feature. There you go. And I think it's one of our most recent ones too. Well, which is, so it's, it's it right was the, the last there. one before there this. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the top ones, so you guys can find it there again, patreon.com slash midnight double feature, uh, and you can get access to dozens of uh, episodes, uh, and again, you can find all of this pretty much at midnightdoublefeature.com, but with all that out of the way, I think that it's time to jump into the movie I think we were more excited to talk about than the one we actually <laughs> talked about on the bonus feed, like because I always feel like if we're going to start, we had, we've never talked about a Planet of the Apes before we did the bonus episode, and I feel right. like you you can't just jump into Empire. You got to start with New Hope. You know, you right. can't just jump right into it. It's, it feels weird. Like, yeah, we all love the Godfather too, but you have to start with the Godfather. You know, you you got to do it in order. Right. Um, and I we had did a lot that of fun. for 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 better for the Dark Knight, and right. uh, we are primed <laughs> to do it for Terminator Two. Uh, I'm yeah, not saying that it's coming down the pike, but we are primed. Yeah, it's been years. It's probably been four years, three or four years since we covered a Terminator movie. Um, I wasn't on it. No, yeah, you weren't on that. That's right. Wow, yeah. that's how long ago it was. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I I think that. This, you know, and and not knocking Rise of the Planet of the Apes. It's a it's a great movie. It's a lot of fun. It's very mm-hmm. good. It's just that, you know, it's like this is the brother who's six foot three, six foot four. And the other two brothers are like seven and seven foot two. And it's like, yeah, yeah, you're tall, but you're not that tall. You know, <laughs> it's kind of the best way I can describe it is like, yeah, you're 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 up there, but you're not all the way kind of like up there. Um, And I, and I think that. You know, it's I think we talked about that. We we said it was kind of like the Mannings. There's Eli and Peyton and there's that third one that nobody really knows about. But he still fucking slaps like he still wrecks when it comes to football. I don't think, you know, our audience when you start <laughs> talking about sports. Uh... I don't know. <clears throat> we got some wrestling fans. So who fucking knows? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <surprise>. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, it, it, I, I had a lot of fun talking about that, but I knew that I was going to be genuinely more excited to talk about the next two films as opposed to this one. And I knew you kind of were too. So why don't we start with you? What were your kind of opening thoughts and when, when was the first time you saw this? Yeah, it's it's tough to talk about this movie without being hyperbolic, without being like, this is the best blah, this is the best blah, you know, but you know, um, I am, if you've listened to that bonus episode, I am incredibly high on this right. movie, I love this movie. Um, the leap in quality between Rise and Dawn is immense, man, and I'm not saying, uh, you know, again, when we talked about Rise, I, I really like Rise. I, I really enjoy it. I think it's a different flavor in this trilogy. Um, you know, like that movie was directed by Rupert Wyatt and these last two are directed by uh, Matt Reeves. And Matt Reeves has a certain style. It's a lot more downbeat and a bit more uh, broody uh, and moody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you know, and I, I, I think Rise is a bit, it's more It's more of a brighter movie when I, start, when I think about Rise. Um, but this one... Um, yeah, so I was working at Hoyt's when this came out. Um, what what year is this? This is 20, 2014. Yeah, so I was working at Hoyt's when this came out. And um, this was huge, man. Like, I mean, you know, people were talking about this movie. Um, you know, people were very, very excited for this movie. And I, dude, looking at the box office, $710 million. Yeah. Like, that is massive like i know it's a hundred it's against a 170 million dollar budget but like man 710 million dollars for a planet of the apes movie in 2014 that's that's right. huge like that's that's genuinely massive like you're talking about talking apes mm-hmm. here and i don't think on the bonus episode we got into our histories with the 60s film or i can't remember if we did or not but i mean let's talk about it mm-hmm. here I haven't seen any yeah, of them. No, um, I. I, I think we might have gotten into that actually, but no, I've never seen them either. Right? <clears throat> uh, have you seen the Burton film? I've seen the Burton oh, film. I, I remember yeah, not liking like it as a, a kid. Long, yeah, probably when I was a kid. Right. Yeah. Um, of course, I know um, the first Planet of the Apes. You know, Charlton Heston and you know the 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 the, the ship. Uh, he crash lands, and you know, of course, at the end, you know, the, the yeah. humaniacs. I actually, I actually just watched it while you were setting up here, uh, while because uh-huh. you, you were you were setting up for the pod, and uh, I just watched it <laughs> like while while you were just doing your stuff. And uh, it's so good. It's so good. Like he's walking along the beach and he finds the Statue of Liberty. He's like, you maniacs, you blew yeah. it up. Well, that's such a um, twist. It's so you know? good. Um, especially yeah. now, if you it's can awesome, find somebody man. who doesn't know that's the end of the, the first movie, you know, you can really right. blow their fucking minds. Uh, well, I, it's so funny because I was watching Dawn yesterday and – Steph had not seen Dawn or War. Damn. Um, and I was, yeah, I know, like, we were watching Dawn, and she's like, that was great. So I guess we're going to watch War soon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, I was telling her that these movies, she's so, uh, she's so cute. She's so fucking blind to pop culture. It's so fucking funny. Oh, yeah. Because um, I'm just, like, trying to teach. <laughs> I'm, it's it's good for me because I get to teach her about it. But, like, I'm like, yeah, these movies are based on a series of, like, old science fiction movies from the 60s and, I was telling her about the twist in the first one, and like knowing that she'll never, she'll never go back yeah. and watch that sixty-year-old mm-hmm. movie. Um, and she's like, "That actually sounds really great. <laughs> like that sounds like a great she's like, story." Why did you ruin it? I was a hundred percent going to watch that. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, but yeah, and and I remember the Burton film had the twist, but in a different way. Um, so from memory, it's Mark Wahlberg discovering. Mm-hmm. Um, a statue of Abraham Lincoln, but instead of Lincoln, it's um, it's the the villain. I think it's Caesar, or, like the the villainous yeah. ape. Oh, it might yeah. be Caesar, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, but uh, again, that that Burton movie is just it's a bit problematic. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, Rise came out and it was a big hit, and then this movie came out, and I remember working with a friend of mine at Hoyts. <laughs> We were so excited about this movie. You know, we had seen it by that by this point. Um, the, this the story I'm going to tell you. And I remember, so Tuesdays uh, is like is like cheap Tuesday for the mm-hmm. cinemas here. Um, I don't think they still do it, but it's like half price <laughs> off tickets and stuff. Um, so you'd find that if you were working on Tuesdays, especially during the school holidays, families would take advantage of that and they'd bring their kids in and whatever. And it would just be an onslaught, right? Like, you know, the lines would be at the door and yeah, you know, feeding frenzy. <laughs> uh, 
Right, yeah, exactly. I remember turning to my friend Chris and, you know, Chris was just like, oh, sorry, he turned to me and he's like, man, it's so fucking busy. And then I just turned to him and I'm like, we've been through hell together. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> like Gary Oldman in this oh, movie, dude. Yeah, it's just, yeah, and yeah. then like, <laughs> and then now. Now I can't. Now this like it popped up because I had not I had not seen this in a very long time. I had not revisited mm-hmm. this this film in a very long time, and then I'm, I sent him a Snapchat of "We've been through hell together." <laughs> and I was just like, "We just fucking cracked up, dude." Um, but um, this movie is um, it's 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 nothing short of incredible yeah. to me. Um. Watching it again for the pod last night, I was just like, how is this not in the public consciousness more? Like, how are we not talking about this movie more? Um, How are we not referencing this movie more? I mean, it is just a... It's a masterclass in filmmaking. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, just... It's from every discernible, you know... Every discernible feature of this movie is amped up to a ten in terms of the quality scale. I mean, um, you've got Weta, you know Peter Jackson's company doing the, the the special effects. Obviously, you know they did Avatar and Andy Serkis. When this movie came out, there was that big, big conversation in the Academy Awards to recognize motion capture as a um, yeah. motion capture <clears throat> actors as actors, right? And um, and unfortunately, it hasn't gone that way um, since. But man, Andy Serkis does an incredible job in this movie as Caesar. But I also really want to shout out Toby Kebbell um, yes, as Cobra because yes, yes. holy fuck, especially on this watch, man, I was like, like they are, they're fucking acting, mm, man. Yeah. These two, like they are. It, it's really telling um, when you look at the cast of this movie. The biggest name is Gary Oldman, and he's maybe like fourth. Fifth right, world. it's like Judy Greer, um, you know, isn't it? I think she's Cornelia, and I'm right. like, what the fuck? I didn't know half these people were in it until but, I Googled it. Right, but your your male lead in this movie is Jason Clark, who's not really a household name. Mm. Like, he's kind of just like a... He's an Australian actor who's been in a bunch of things. He was in Zero, Zero Dark Thirty, whatever. He's a good actor, um, but like no one knows him by name. I know him by name because he's, like, he's like that uh, like, Joel Edgerton kind of, uh, kind of, kind of box. I'd say less so. No, I'd say yeah. people know who Joel Edgerton yeah. is. Th- yeah, yeah, but like no one knows who Jason. I, Clark I feel is. like if like, you I mean, ask, especially where I'm from, if you put the two of them and you're like, name these two actors. Where I'm from, they're probably like, right. I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. But I mean, you know, you've just got like a bunch of no names in this movie um, outside of Gary mm-hmm. Oldman. Um, I mean, Carrie Russell, <clears throat> for sure. I mean, but she's known for the Americans and um, Cody Smith McPhee would become big later. Um, he was cast as Nutcrawler. That's in, right. In, in Apocalypse and Dark That's Phoenix. Right. And he was, he was nominated for an Oscar a couple of years ago for The Power of the Dog. I, um, Kevin I like Rankin him a lot as, yeah. as a younger kind of actor. I think he does fine stuff. Like it's it's small, but it, you know, a lot of people would try to try to t- stretch the most out of that the actor. But right. he kind of he stays very subtle with it and doesn't feel the need to push beyond that. I really like I really liked his performance. He does. I think the choices that Matt Reeves really makes in this movie, in terms of just like how much human stuff is in this, and where to pull back on the humanity of mm-hmm. it all, is really really clever. Um, because the focus is always on the apes, pretty much. Um, the focus is on this colony that Caesar has uh, has has created, and not only that, but the values that he's trying to instill on his son and Cobra and how to lead. Um, you know, like this movie is all about about pretty much figuring out how to lead properly and how to, uh, for lack of a better term, like. I don't. Uh, how do I put this? How do I? Mm, not judging people or not judging yeah. races. Um, you know, because like obviously Caesar comes to the conclusion that like, oh shit, you know, like I I didn't trust mm-hmm. humans and it was ape that did this and you know it's not about what species you are, but it's about what experiences you've been through, right? I mean, like Cobra is awesome. Man, like I, I have always loved Cobra mm-hmm. as a villain. Like he's just like like the, the the little shit that he does in this, like him fucking up those two dudes and using his intellect and 
you know, kind of like downplaying his intellect and I, I just love, like, it's so devious yeah. and- he's got, he's got like a whole subplot going he's on. He's got a whole subplot going on, but like even just the little things like in the, in the, in the final fight when he's, you know, picking up the gun from that, that, that ape and he doesn't help the ape, he just, you know, just picks up the, the gun and leaves yeah. him there. Um, it's, it's so good, man. Like he feels very well-rounded. Um, you know, it, like like you got like a, a little spark of him in the first one and the kind of rage that is like under the surface, but like here it's just like loose. And I guess it's kind of like that sort of like Macbeth um, story, right? I mean, like, you know, the the Lion King story, you know, like the whole... Um, yeah, the, the tragedy right. of Ju- Julius Caesar being killed by uh, Brutus. Right, you right, know, right. right. Someone so close exactly, to you. exactly. And it's... Um, Oh, I can't. I I can't tell you how much I love this movie. This this might be one of my favorite movies of all time. I'm not even kidding. This is in like a top fifteen for sure. Um, yeah, I I, I really like War. Um, and I know I think you mentioned that you might have liked War a little bit better. I can't remember. But yeah, I th- I think so. I haven't seen it in a long time though. Mm. I think what this movie has going for it over War for me is the fact that. Uh, I like that this is more ape centric. Um, mm. That the villain is essentially an ape. Um, it, you know, I, I think war. I think war. It, it dragged a little bit. I haven't visited that. Vis- revisited that movie in a long time. It's been. A, it's been a very long time. I think it might have been since it came out. To be honest. Um, but man, man, do I love this movie. Nice. Um, yeah, I, I think yeah. that this one's definitely a little bit more hopeful than War. War is just like, man, you just know you're going to watch fucking apes die. Um, <clears throat> Billions Blade Runner. Like, this is definitely this is definitely skyrocketed up there. And the thing is, it's so much newer than all of those. But, uh, you know, based off of a, of, of, of a property that was 20 years older than those movies at the time, you know, or 10 years older or, or however, um, you know, I, it's 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 really interesting seeing how, oh, yeah. uh, you know, because I don't really feel like anybody was asking for you know you know what they really need to redo planet of the apes it's like why you know i I don't know anybody who uh was asking for something kind of like like this and and i I feel like this is kind of like what matt reeves did for planet of the apes it's kind of like what nolan did for batman where it's dark it's gritty it makes it it makes it feel very real it it makes it feel like man this is this is kind of what it would feel like if this were going down and those are my favorite kind of movies it's like the apes aren't invincible you know that they that they do take a lot of casualties and that makes you you know this is one of the few kind of movies like this where you actively like root for the downfall of humanity you know like (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> where like you want to see the apes win, you know, you want to see the humans make it, but at the same time, you know, you know, uh, it's like, man, but we'll, we fuck so much shit up and we'll probably keep fucking shit up. If we go back to the way things are like what Dreyfus wants and blah, blah, blah. So I think it's got a lot of like interesting, um, uh, interesting, like philosophic and uh, philosophical and moral things going on, especially with race and class. And there's a lot of different, um, things going on like which like what you might hear um but but this one i definitely um i you know i can see why this is argued as like the best one out of them uh you know it's it it looks in it abs- just absolutely fucking incredible Dude, even th- i was having a fucking meltdown <laughs> like i was like i was like this this is 20 this is nine years ago that i mean you know yeah the- what <clears throat> and 170 million dollars yeah like you're like wow that doesn't like now i feel like this movie would be like 325 million dollars this would be you an avatar I mean? budget yeah for sure right um and that's that's something that i i've really i've really grown to like appreciate about this movie is that it's by no means a small budget but smaller than i would have thought i would have thought this movie was easily 200 to 225 million dollars i would have thought this was definitely a, a much bigger budget than it actually is um but i i love what they do with caesar i love what they do with the apes um i think i think the first movie really kind of planted the foot down for caesar as like one of the best science fiction characters of all time but this is the one where it's like okay not only is he smart and he's intel he's smart and he's caring and he is empathetic but he will rip your fucking head off like he will he will pull your arm out of socket and beat you to death with it interestingly um, um war of the planet of the war for the planet of the apes is budgeted at one hundred and fifty-two million dollars. So lo- lower than this, but also 
the box office was only four hundred and ninety million dollars as well. Like this is wow. this made twenty nineteen. Twenty seventeen. This made really this made like near three hundred million more, which is crazy. Huh. That is interesting. Um uh, I, I, I just I, I think this movie really knocks it out of the park with pretty much everything that it's trying to accomplish. You know, nobody is truly a hero, nobody is truly a villain. Uh there's faults and cracks on both sides. And um, you know, ultimately you do kind of end up rooting for for the apes more because it is kind of their story. Um, but also they're the ones who are like they don't really I don't know. Yes, the I guess the whole war started with Koba, but that ball was knocked into his court by another hand. You know what I mean? Like somebody had to start the match with him for him to be the one to spike the ball back. You know, like somebody tortures him and then Koba, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. If Koba had never been tortured, blah, blah, blah. You know, it, it kind of is like it's a war, but it was something that had been going on for so much longer than that. And a lot of these apes uh, lives and seeing, you know, God, how many other friends have fucking died or how many of these apes like watch you know then them test make up on an ape and it's like oh yeah it fucking turns your asshole inside out and your heart explodes ah we can't use that you know and it just shovel the ape off and shit like that yeah um, it's it's interesting um that this comes up because guardians 3 is currently out in cinemas right now and there's there's a lot of like um rocket raccoons backstory which is very similar to cobra's backstory um mm-hmm. like the the torturing and the experimentation but like that's also really tied into the plot of that movie and like the like like fixing broken things and experimenting to create something better um and you know <clears throat> how human it is well how inhumane it is rather to be to be doing that yeah absolutely right right so yeah i i really i i love this movie there there's nothing in it that i really see that like i would have to go looking for picks to nitpick at so there's really nothing there that like and not saying that's something i actively do but there are there's like there's times where it's you know you watch something and it just kind of like ah, there's something that i don't like about that and you have to kind of figure out what it is but mm-hmm. you just know you don't kind of like it and there's nothing in that movie that really happens for me i think this, that, this goes down so well for me man like yes yes ugh. this is this is like a well-made a very well-made cocktail it's 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 a longer movie but it's not too terribly long it's an action movie but it doesn't have a shit load of action it's a drama but it's not just a total drama like there's funny parts in it there's like little moments of brevity here and there the playing with the little baby chimp ape uh, is a great scene and there are moments albeit brief with the human characters that I love when um, the boy Alex is talking to Ellie and he's asking, Oh, I didn't know that you had a daughter and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, Oh yeah. And here's this kid who really should be in his own kind of head of mourning of, you know, my mom is dead. My dad's a wreck, like blah, blah, blah. But really he's still, even in his kind of like being stuck in the muck and the mire in the dark still reaches out to somebody else to be like, I'm sorry. I didn't know that you had a kid. It's like, just to know that that kind of basic humanity is there and someone that young it's like okay we got a chance well you know like it's like ah, we you know i think we can do it and that's that's the way that the colony feels about turning on the power is the way that we as the audience feel about caesar and malcolm being able to make this relationship work and when it doesn't it's like fuck like you just yeah. fucking god damn it dude yeah. like and it, everything in you it makes you so fucking mad that they just can't get this thing to click because you know what's coming like you know it's going to be bad you know nobody is going to make it out of you know um i don't know you know obviously it's it's like caesar it's like it's like all these like middle-aged white guys that he becomes friends with just end up fucking getting the you know because <laughs> jane franco is obviously dead in this one um right. but there is kind of like information on what happened to Malcolm in between this and war. Um, oh, is that? I was, yeah, I wondered what happened to him. And if you don't want to hear, skip ahead 15, 30 seconds. But basically, uh, Colonel Harrelson in the third one, whatever the fuck he's called, he kills Colonel Malcolm. Kurtz. Yeah, Colonel Kurtz. Yeah, Colonel, uh, yeah, Colonel uh, Dallas from uh, No Country. <laughs> um, but yeah, he basically kills that his character over that because he thinks he's spreading his idea. His ideas are going to spread of like, you know, Oh, they're not bad people. We can make this work or they're not bad, you know, apes. Like we can make this work and blah, blah, blah. Was that in like uh, a comic book or something? Or? No, I, I, something that Reeves, 
in an interview he was in, whether it was a script or a draft that he mm. wrote, but it was Reeves himself that confirmed it. And I was like, oh, okay, that really, that makes it canon to me. You know, that yeah. makes it a hundred percent, you know, um, which, uh, I've said these would, and if they, I would be very surprised if they aren't comic books already. I'm sure that they are. Oh yeah. Um, but the video game, man, where is the video game of this? Like of this movie, <laughs> it's just like, uh, like, um, you know, a Halo Two. You play as the chimps, you play as the humans, you play as you know, and you go back and forth like Arbiter and the Chief. Something like that would be an incredible game. I think you'd have so much fun, or even like a real time strategy where you control groups of apes and collect resources. That'd be a lot of fun. Uh, but I, I love this movie. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I don't have a problem with it. Um, it's like a great meal. It's just like it's not too fattening, but it's not. It, you know, you don't feel like you're walking away. Uh, leaving stuff on the table it's just like ah oh, man it's just it's a great it feels like a like a great meal um but we can uh we can kind of jump right in from here because we get this we get this catch up kind of uh this kind of um pretty much uh taking over from the cre- end credit scene of the of rise right? right i mean like this is that sort of like overhead map thing that we got at the end of the last film but like now with um, audio, you know, just pretty much like catching us up and letting us know what's been happening over the last 10 years. And man, I was watching this and I was like, this is insanely close to what happened in COVID. Like this is yeah. Yeah. ridiculously close. Like, I mean, you know, it's the it's the quarantine zones and it's the unable to leave your house. And then it, it, the, the level of um, just how much they got right in terms of escalation because, like, you know, by the time, um, you know, the virus spreads, people are fighting and people are looting. And I'm just like, yeah, this is this is 100% accurate. Like, you know, in a pre-COVID world, when you're watching this, you're like, ah, you know, I didn't think there'd be war over this. <laughs> but, like, it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, I, I, I think if COVID went on for long enough, then... You know, COVID, mm-hmm. COVID obviously still exists, but like if the r- rules and regulations went off went on long enough, then right. we might be right. seeing a similar situation, which is and not the, which is not too far removed from this, which is wild. Well, and and, and the more and if the mortality rate was like you know if COVID like killed ten times more people, but then it also made rhino super strong, we'd be like, <laughs> oh god damn it, you right. know, like. <laughs> right. Well, um, okay, but <clears throat> hold on. So the simian flu, but okay, the 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 simian flu. And the and the chemicals used to make Caesar and his friends smart. Those are two different things, though, right? Like that's one does not have, you know, one one does ha- not have yeah uh, anything to do. with I don't the know. Other, I I right? think I don't know if it ended up making the ALZ stronger or, but I feel like it's a, that's almost too much of a coincidence to be like, oh, mm. there's the super flu and also the apes all got strong. It's like. Okay, well, I, I think you need, and and maybe I'm wrong, but the way that I've interpreted it is that the ALZ basically infects humans, but makes the apes, you know, uh, incredibly strong. Uh, that that's that's kind of or m- more intelligent or more strong or whatever. Or the flu is just a byproduct. Uh, right. Maybe it's not like you know it just developed over time, but it, it, I I don't know um, because it is Caesar that bites that guy you know it's caesar who infects yeah, that, yeah. that dude and and i feel like isn't okay <laughs> i might be wrong but isn't that speaking of which we're about to cover tucker and dale versus evil yeah that's Tyler dale yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> what he a, weird... a great show called uh reaper with ray wise he, yeah he's great i like that guy what, what a weird like ding 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 uh, simulation world we're living in that is wild mm-hmm um let me see here. I'm actually reading. Okay. Uh, the simian flu, ALZ-112 and ALZ-13, uh, blah, 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 temporarily on father. In order to make the effects permanent in humans, a second more powerful contagious strain was created, which ultimately proved fatal to humans, mm. leading to the simian flu pandemic and the rise of the wall of Right. So, yeah, they are they are connected. Because what's interesting okay. is, like, I think what, what Will is working on in the first movie is ALZ-112. 112, 112 like, yeah. But at the beginning of this movie, she on the if you if you put the captions on, they're like after the spread of the ALZ one thirteen, and I was like, oh, so they pushed Will's even so they continued with whatever Will was doing, and that's what kind of like I was like was because was ALZ thirteen like was was one twelve green eyes and she died, and one thirteen ended up being like Caesar. Like I I wasn't a hundred percent sure, but to me I I took that as oh they continued with this even after there was like an ape outbreak on the Golden Gate Bridge. I mean that yeah. seems like big 
big pharma to me. So. Right, right. Um, we get this nice little uh, kind of like a, what, catch, what catches uh, catches us up from the first movie. Uh, we don't know it yet, but it's been 10 years. Something more East says later on. It's been 10 winters. I'm like, I love the way they put stuff. Um I love just the way they talk. Apes go. Apes seek strongest branch. It's like ah, it's so good. Yeah, it's it's never more than one. It's never more than two syllables. Right. Um, and e- even like when they do talk, I remember, I remember that being a big thing. So in the first one, when he when he said uh, no, like that was a massive moment. And then like this one comes around and they're speaking a lot more. And I remember people, some people being kind of like turned off a little bit that they are talking so much. And I'm just like, man, you kind of got to roll with it a little bit. Like, you, it's just one of those it's, things. In any, any more, I would yes. agree. But they, they do it just right. enough. And yes. Yeah. To where it's really only him and Koba. Really you know? only him and Koba. And at one point, his son. But like, also, like, and Maurice at one point. But like, also, like, it's just, you know, it's never more than two syllables. Um, and it, it, like, you know, you got to. It's science fiction, man. You just gotta roll with the punches, you know. Sure. I mean, like it's it's better than the '60s version when they're speaking in full Shakespearean, you know. <laughs> right. Text. Yeah. R- Roddy McDowell and his transatlantic ass accent. Right. Um, we see the ape society. They're doing well for themselves. They're enjoying themselves. A, a big hunt. I like the beginning of this. You're kind of like, man, that's how organized they are now. Like it's so good. I, I I see them planting crops like in the next five years, you know, and be like, oh, yeah, the seed, actually. We get vegetables. With Thanos. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, just just one real quick note, and I don't I don't want to cover this movie frame by frame, but, man, the the, the, the moment, that first shot of Caesar, like the through the eyes, mm-hmm. and, you know, that being bookended with, like, the being the final shot is such a great choice. Yeah. Um, but not only that, this is such a great introductory statement of like Weta being like, look at what we've done. <laughs> this is the level yeah. of special effects we're dealing with in this movie. And we're going to hit you like w- with this immediately. And right. when you look at it, man, like the the detail in his eyes, the hair, like the... the, 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 oh, the, the, f- the, the fucking bear coming out of the... It's like... <sighs> I, that always gets me. I'm like, oh shit, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> right. Well, this I think this predates the Revenant. <laughs> but yeah, oh yeah. Like, <laughs> um, man, I, 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 every time I watch this movie, I'm just blown away at like the the hairs and the wrinkles and. Mm-hmm. It's just insane to believe that these are not real apes. <laughs> Right, yeah, especially again on a hundred and seventy million dollar budget. It's just like, man, that's just wow. Um, and there, I, I personally think it looks even better in the third one when he's got he's graying now, and I'm like, oh, mm. that's beautiful. It just it's so, such a beautiful image. Um, I love this. I love this scene though. Like this is such a great um, intro to like who, like these like how mm-hmm. organized they are. Like you said, but like, man, like Reeves's like filmmaking here is just. Absolutely amazing! Like it just feels the, like the, first blood, you know. Yes, <laughs> yes. The, the 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 shot of like the cameras on the ground and it's looking up, and you just see like the apes moving through the trees, and um, even just like the the perspectives. So like you know he's focusing on like a a tree, but in the background you just see like swinging like a swinging black mass, and I'm just like yes, like that looks so good. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I also have a swinging black mass. Um, that's that's unrelated to that. <laughs> Uh, uh, that's pretty. That was yeah. a good one. Uh, yeah, I, was, I just realized <laughs> that I, I said that, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> normally I'm like, oh, it's not bad. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I get. Yeah, I like the organization. I like seeing the the, the group as a whole uh, and the dedication. Uh, you know, it, I, I think in a lot of ways, Koba kind of has a lot uh, of like the whole. Um, Anakin Skywalker kind of like fall from grace, a friend, a very close person willing to put their sacrifice themselves to, to come up on this bear in the middle of the woods uh, and actually save Caesar's life. And then by the end of it, it's the exact opposite. You know, you're actually trying to kill each other. It's like, how did we fall so far, you know, to here? Um, Caesar has a son, blue, blue eyes, which is interesting. I think the son born in this one is going to be the leader in the, the later, uh, movies the Ryder mcdowell 60s cornelius oh okay that's interesting um i think he's also in this new film that's about to come out um i hope so directed by west ball so. yeah. kingdom yeah 
Yeah, I'm really excited to see what they do with it. It's just been a while. It's been a while since we've had one of these. But um, yeah, all, we, we basically kind of get a, a, a nice, quick catch up with with our with our movie is that we see that you know the the apes are doing well that caesar's wife is pregnant that they're you know they're having big hunts they're they're successful we see blue eyes get a little cut up unfortunately uh and and just the coba at the beginning of this is just so fucking different to the one that we get at the end where he's like oh cheer up blue eyes you know it'll scars make you strong and by the end of it he's like it's dropping his own apes like down a flight of stairs like holy shit um what do you think of uh, Michael Giacchino's score in this movie? Uh, I, I like it. Um, you know, it's not anything that screamed out to me. I think I think I remember there's parts of Wars that really do that, but I I, I like it. I don't I don't dislike it at all. It definitely fits everything very well. Mm. Uh, I think the the best kind of music is sometimes stuff that doesn't always jump out to you because it just fits everything so well. You almost don't even notice it. You take it for granted. I do at least in a way. Yeah, I think it's good. Um, I think, uh, you know, like in this opening scene here, it's a bit more dark and brooding, but then it kind of like lightens up a little bit as it goes along. Um, But I was reading something from Jacano and he was like, yeah, I took um, elements from the 60s films and even um, Danny Elfman's score from the the Mark Wahlberg version. And then I just added some other motifs from like Lost and Super Super 8 and then... uh, yeah, like I think it's good. It really complements it uh, really well. I think. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and and like we said, it's been ten winters, as Marie says. Um, you know, if there are any humans, there's probably not a whole lot of them left. Then uh, speak of the devil, and he shall arrive. Um, because literally right after that, and, and I and I love this kind of setup that they have. This kind of dug into the side of the woods. Um, you know, they've come a long way in 10 years of being in these woods, which is, is really interesting. In indoor? Um, yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. Fucking indoor. Um, but the, uh, you know, they, I like this conversation that they have where they kind of talk about the, the, the differences between it's like, you know, it, it's, it's, it's Caesar's kind of like ego in ape where he's just like, you know, Maurice says, Hey, apes fight. And Caesar says, yeah, but we're family. And it's like, no, you're not. Like not all of you are family. Like you don't don't get it fucking twisted, man. Like some of these people would slit your throat for this spot, and you know that's that's always people like that are pretty much always going to be there. I think that's a thing about any kind of leadership when you're above a certain group of people. Is there somebody who would step into that and and you know step on your toes in a heartbeat right. to get to where you're yeah. at? Yeah, you know, and you, and you can't be that naive, even if you are the same species or race or whatever. Um. But like I said, speak of the devil and they shall appear because while uh, I think this is blue eyes and ash, Ash, this is rocket sun, uh, which don't 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 forget about him because he'll be very important at the end of this movie. Uh, There's there's something very interesting about him that like, well, fuck it, I'll just cover it. Um, the, The thing that I love is that, you know, that he shot and that and that. Uh, Koba really kind of tra- trouts Ash are like Rocket. They shot your son. They shot Ash. Blah 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 blah. And then that's the one that Koba murders when he doesn't kill the human with the metal. Like Koba just straight up murders him. And it's like so you'll use his kind of injuries to make your point. And you know it's kind of like the, when the school shooting happens and someone's like, oh, gun control, good, bad, blah blah mm. blah. It's like they're using this awful thing to make their point. But then when the time came around for Koba to be a fucking leader, he killed this kid. And it's like, holy shit, you know, like that's that's really disturbing. It sh- it really shows you that there is no empathy for the apes from Koba. This is not a family to him. You know, this no. this is not not like it is for most of it's, them. It, um, I want to say it is. And this is man, like this is the thing I really love about Koba as a as a quote unquote villain. But like you really kind of understand where he's coming from. I mean, oh, you yeah. look at the scars that he, you know, he points out at one point. He's like human work, human mm-hmm. work, you know. And I'm just like, you kind of get it, man. Like you know, like those are the most compelling. Hard to argue with it. Quote unquote villains. Yeah, exactly. And you know, you kind of really start to sympathize with his, I guess, um, with his resolve and like why he's doing this and, um. You know, and obviously his mission becomes more like his mind becomes more and more twisted to achieving his mission mm. because he's so um, he's he's just been wronged for so long. And mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it, it, he's just absolutely compelling in this movie. Yeah, though. he's just too too far gone. You know, um, I think. Um, yeah, the, the, and I love the fact that Ash is Rocket's son, and Rocket was the one who was beating up on Caesar originally in the first one. Because uh, Maurice is like, "Why did you give a cookie to Rocket?" And I'm like, "Oh yeah, mm. Rocket from the first one." I was like, "Holy shit!" Um, but the uh, you know, like it's, it's all connected. Uh-huh. Uh, but like I said, Ash ends up getting, getting shot by I think this is Carver, the the, uh, the kind of the the Koba of their group, <laughs> kind of right, right. Um, I, I love the way this is shown as well. Mm-hmm. Like, like it's so tense, man. Like, I mean, <laughs> you just yeah, uh, the the hissing and like the build up of the music, and then just the the sound of the of the gun, and then you cut away to Caesar waking up, and yes. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, and that's something else I love is that it's so quiet out here that that you can hear that gunshot from probably a mile away because there's nothing else going right, on. You can hear hear best shit in the woods. Yeah. Um. So yeah, uh, yeah. While fishing, they end up finding these humans. Uh, Carver shoots Ash, uh, and the the humans are basically there saying, "Hey, you know, we need uh, uh, you know, like not not actually. No, I'm sorry, take that back. This is not when they first but- drop the thing. They come back." Uh, because he, there's right, a, he comes correct, back yeah. a few times and that fucks me up sometimes. Like, wait, yeah, okay, yeah, that's right. Don't come back. But then he, like, he, he leaves, he gets kicked out, he comes back, he gets kicked out, he marches into Caesar's home. And I'm like, dude, you are really, I would, I might rip your arms off your body at this point. <laughs> like, you're getting kind he's of pushy. A, he's clingy, man. Yeah. He's a, cl- he's like a, he's like a clean girlfriend, you know? Like, you just kind of, well, yeah. And, yeah, you, gotta, you know, Caesar's like, oh, oh, I'm dumb. sorry. You, can, your bidets don't work anymore. I don't give a shit. I, <laughs> <laughs> right. I watched my wife um, eat my but, first two sons. <laughs> I don't care. I, I do love this though. Like the first moment that these humans come across these apes and they're just like, you know, like, why are you trying to talk to them? Why are you trying to converse to mm-hmm. them? Like, you know, like they're fucking apes. And then he's just like, do they, they do they look like apes? Like they look so organized. They're yeah. carrying spears mm-hmm. and um, they're all like clearly following this one leader. Like there is intelligence here, and man, when when Caesar when Caesar drops the, Go! Oh, I'm yeah. just like, um, oh, the sound design in this movie is absolutely un unparalleled, man. Yeah, it's it's fucking brutal, uh, and and of course because it's it's Andy Serkis's voice has got an incredible voice already. You know, without modulation or like without editing or anything, he's already got. Andy Serkis just has an incredible voice. Yeah. Um, well, and the look, it's the look of Caesar, just, so just the, cause I have it paused right before he yells go. And it just, the wrinkles in the forehead and just him looking down. Oh my God. Just how right. aggravated he is. is fantastic. hundred percent. Um, so he ends up kicking him out and says, get the fuck out of here. Uh, the kid drops his back, Alex. Uh, but he basically, I'd shit my pants, dude. If a fucking ape yelled. Yeah. <laughs> yelled at yeah. Me. Right. Um, and he ends up um, uh, dropping his bag, which Maurice collects. And Caesar, you know, he's he's no fool though. He sends, you know, obviously people to track them and watch where they're going. Um, Koba, right? Yeah, Koba specifically, uh, which is which is interesting. It's like the people that you think you can trust with stuff. Um, and uh, ultimately, you know, they they make it back to the colony and we're introduced to Dreyfus, who's played by uh, Commissioner Gordon. Um, no, <laughs> no, it's played by Gary Oldman, the fantastic Gary Oldman. Uh, what did you think about Dreyfus? Man, in this? Gary, dude, he's so good in this. Uh, it's, like, it's such a brief they role. They gave him, you know, it's such a brief and fleeting role because it's not really the villain. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it is an, in it is in a sort of like an antagonistic sense but he's not the villain i wouldn't say in this movie like you know if there is an antagon- antagonist in this movie it's Koba, it's not dreyfus um mm-hmm. but like i can see how one could make the case that maybe he is but i think there's a lot of self-preservation in in this character um when i say self-preservation i mean self-preservation in terms of preserving the hum- the humans right like right. the human group i don't i don't mean just himself right. but like um he man G- gary oldman to quote to use a twitter colloquial colloquial co- co- colloquialism gary oldman ate and left no fucking crumbs he's so <laughs> good in this man like he's just when he uh, when they get the power back and he's looking at the frames and all that stuff and he's looking at the pictures of his family and he starts crying and I'm just like oh Ga- Gary you are like 
you're in a Planet of the Apes movie and you are acting, sir. Like right. you are just you are absolutely acting. Um and uh I, I remember being, you know, watching this movie uh with Chris, my friend, uh at while we we're at Hoyt's, and I, I was like, Man, Gary Oldman is just so good and everything. And like he was kind of looking at me like being like, Well, he's just kind of like that guy. Like, I don't really see it. and I'm like, Yeah, but like he's whenever he's in something, he's really good in it, you mm-hmm. know? And 2014 was really like the kind of era that I was really into like Leon the professional and stuff and like going back and like looking at like Gary Oldman and I was like yeah Gary Oldman is man he he can cook like yeah. you know he let can, him cook he can cook man um, yes exactly exactly he's so good in this man I really dig it yeah I I think he does a pretty good job he's got two speeches in this movie he's got two speeches yeah uh, yeah and both of them are good I want to say he's I I would say he's probably collectively in this movie for less than ten minutes I feel like like mm-hmm. very very mm-hmm. sporadically I feel like he's in this um. We've been through hell together. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah so, uh, and, and they tell Dreyfus what's going on. Uh, basically, the dam's there, but, uh, you know, they're organized. There's maybe about 80 of them, uh, which is a, <laughs> that, that's a great line later on. He's like, there's a hell of a lot more than 80. Um, and you really get the sense that just how cramped and packed in these humans are here. And Dreyfus says, don't tell anybody what the fuck is going on. I don't want to start a panic that I, you know, if I don't have to, um, you know, he's not a terrible leader. You kind of get the sense that like, yeah, he really does want these people to thrive. Right. And I was trying to figure out like how he became, he came to be in this leadership role. And I guess it's because, you know, they don't mention it. Um, but there's a very brief moment where he's looking at a photo yes. and he's in the military, yes. right? So, you know, he might have been a colonel or something, um, like someone really kind of like high up and mm-hmm. I don't know. But I, I do like that they don't give us a lot. Like they kind of like leave us mm-hmm. leave us sort of like guessing or wondering. But like he does say um, he does say that he and um, uh, Malcolm – founded this place right like you know he like both of them together so i kind of wonder whether they were both in the military uh well wikipedia has gary oldman as dreyfus an ex-police officer um could be both a lot of a lot of guys leave yeah, the service be and yeah. end up being become, become yeah. cops and stuff um, i also don't want to go past carrie russell's character ellie mm-hmm. here who mentions that may that you know we're all immune like this is why this is why there's this society of humans because we're all immune. Right. Yeah. That's, that's definitely really, and that she worked for the CDC. Uh, so she knows right. what she's yeah. talking about, but, um, also Malcolm and Ellie, not an item. I really dig that. Um, they are not, they were not together. Um, uh, well, are they together in this? They're not, I definitely think they are actually. Well, okay, but I don't. I, I like that they did not start together, if that makes sense. Like they don't. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it was already like a pre. Well, and you get the sense it's not like a romance. It's like a survival kind right. of thing. But yeah. you know they they are widows and widow, uh, widows and widowers, and they're kind of like picking up the pieces and and helping each right. other through that as well. Um, well, it's one of those situations where like <laughs> you know there's there's not many people around, and everyone kind of looks like tens. But you know. Russell, yeah. <laughs> but, but, I mean, look, it's it's um, Carrie Russell. Yeah, but uh, back at the A base, the uh, the the kind of higher ups, the leaders in the group are arguing over whether or not to go to war. Caesar says that he will decide by morning. Uh, you know that going to war is not the best thing for us. Um, and uh, yeah, right, yeah. Let me sleep on Touch it. Needs a little uh, and his decision is made the next morning. They they go up. I, what I love is that when. Uh, right before this, when you see Malcolm and everybody driving down that road, that I'm pretty sure is the same road and rise that all the apes are on the train car coming up. And it's like, you see the humans having to descend into this worst kind of worse for wear kind of place. Cause you can see the track lines in the, in the ground. And I was like, isn't that so funny in the first one, you're literally watching the apes rise. And then in the second one, you're seeing humanity basically kind of, you know, slumming it now with no power and everyone's having to wash their own ass and stuff it sucks um but um you know like the seizure shows yeah. up and lays down the wall this human home back there ape home uh the shot the first shot of them when they're all on horses and he says that's a hell of a lot more than 80 it's like 
holy fuck you know if it, it feels like um there's a great simpsons episode where they fight a bunch of they're fighting dolphins and they leave the city ta- the, the town hall to go fight the dolphins and they're fight it's like the birds like they're everywhere like they're just surrounding you um <laughs> but you know again i, I like that malcolm's character is not an idiot he was going to go back up there anyways you know and he says if he wanted to kill us he could have just killed us and that would have been that would have sent the message fine you know stay the fuck out but he actually let us live you know there has to be something more to that um and just the fact that they actually show up and it's not just caesar it's not just caesar caesar and like the high council or whatever it's everybody it's, it's just a like, show of force it's a yes. show it's a show of force to to let the humans know that this is what they're up against, you know, and maybe this is it, maybe it isn't, maybe there's more at home, right? But don't fuck with us, you know. Right. Um, but I love the 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 reaction to when he starts talking. He's like, "Apes do not want war," and um, it's it's so powerful. Like his statement is so powerful, you know. Mm-hmm. Like apes do not want war, but we'll fight if we must. And I'm just like. Yeah, man. Like this is <laughs> this is when I figured out that this movie was incredible. Like I was just mm-hmm. like, oh, I am well, all in on this. And 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 the kind it, to me, this is the kind of moment when you realize that you know that there that that Dreyfus is broken, like Koba is broken. Uh, you know, there there's just this hatred uh, towards the other group. You know, that at no point does Dreyfus say, "Hey, they're obviously intelligent. They're obviously organized. Why not make?" both of our worlds better and see what we can, we our antibiotics healed his wife, saved his child uh, or saved her after, you know, she gave birth to the child. Um, why can we not have a mutually beneficial relationship at no point does strife is even attempt to offer that. There's not one iota of an attempt in any of that. Uh, and I think that that's a choice. You, you like his choice is doom. A lot of them, you know, and I understand they get, they get attacked. Um, but there's really no, like, you know, it, it really, I feel like Malcolm really has to twist his arm to be like, give me two days to go up there. And he says, oh, yeah. yeah, I'll give you two days. And if I don't hear from you after that, we're going to go ape hunting, you know? Um, I, I, th- I think it's pretty interesting seeing that Dreyfus didn't Dreyfus. I don't think really wanted peace. I don't think peace was ever an option with him. <laughs> are, you qu- are you quoting Magneto from yeah. first class? Hell yeah. Peace was never an option. Um, I want to talk about, yeah, like Caesar's kind of like mentality here and his, for lack of a better term, naivete, um, you know, like to coexist, right? You can approach this as like a glass half full or, or a glass half empty kind of situation, you know, like we can coexist if we just leave each other the fuck alone, which is exactly what Caesar's proposing. But like, you know, as you said, there like this is a society. This is bigger than one ape, right? You know, you have apes in that society who have been harmed and who have been done wrong by the other group, very much like the other side, where, uh, in in Dreyfus's way. Uh, sorry, in Dreyfus's situation where he's been done wrong by mm-hmm. the apes, and it's just it's this naivete on Caesar's side to believe that they can get along and coexist and. You know, and 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 you know, kumbaya and hold hands and whatever. But right. like, that's just not the case. And it reminds me of like, I feel like that was imparted on him by his, uh, I guess, surrogate father in the first in the first movie. Like, you know, his first like mm-hmm. James Franco was very naive. You know, believing that uh, the one twelve could cure Alzheimer's, right? And at one point it does, but he was kind of immune to the side effects. Like, he didn't really look at the side effects. He's like, oh, we'll just worry about it later. Like, you know, he's right. like, oh, whatever. Like, you know, like, let, like as long as we achieve the main goal, we'll figure everything else out later. And I feel like that's what Caesar's doing here. Like, you know, like, yeah, I'm just like. I, yeah, it's a bit yeah. of collateral damage, you know, right. uh, yeah. by, by not realizing how it's like, yeah, you got the sofa in the house, but you ripped a hole in the wall doing it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Right, you're gonna have to <laughs> fucking put some jip rock down and yeah. shit, and right, do it all over again. Up. And, yeah. um, let me That's see That's not stucco. God damn it. <laughs> um, well, let me look at my notes real quick. Um, 
Yeah, he says, stay the, fuck, uh, stay the fuck out of Ape Hood, you know, uh, stay the fuck out of our neighborhood. Uh, <laughs> this uh, this causes a panic, uh, which Dreyfus has to kind of quell. Uh, he says, you know, we're going to need a hell of a lot more than a megaphone and a speech if we're going to, you know, pipe these guys down next time we're two or three weeks away from being out of power. And this is when Malcolm pitches to give me a couple of days to get up there and, and get some get some work done. Right. Um, Essentially, they need to get the dam going again for, for power. Right. Uh, yeah, Which kind of reminded me a little bit of Avatar. Like, I mean, you know, not not because they want to mine the resources that the quote natives are sitting on, but like they uh, they're trying to achieve, like they're trying to get into uh, a location where the natives are. Like, if that makes I sense. I haven't seen it. Av- Avatar. Yeah, never seen it. You're the one person on the planet that hasn't seen <laughs> a- James James Cameron's Avatar. No. <laughs> That's funny. I mean, you look, you're not missing much. Um, if you didn't watch it, my, my thing on Avatar is, oh, for both of those films, is if you didn't watch it at the movies, you won't like it at home. That's, mm, that's what okay. I with that. Yeah. Matt, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and yeah, uh, th- hopefully what Malcolm is trying to do is talk to Caesar and stop this, hopefully get, stop this war before it starts. Uh, because like what Dreyfus says, well, we're taking that damn, like we're getting up there and taking that one way or another. Um so if you could do a piece really great, but if not, pow, pow, um, the group ends up departing. I was with them. Um, the, uh, uh, Cameron is pretty much immediately captured by the way, when they arrive there, uh, he steps out of the car for two minutes. Malcolm. And, oh yeah. Sorry. Malcolm. I don't know. Why I said Cameron. Um, the uh yeah i think he gets spotted by like mighty joe young immediately uh and he gets fucking hauled <laughs> off um and then, like dragged like a fucking mighty dead joe. dog like uh, oh and, and, and um, there, this oh go ahead go ahead go oh i was just gonna like point out how good the, the set design in this movie is um, yeah mm-hmm. feels like braveheart or like uh, you know i don't know yeah. something about that like a like a medieval yeah like war film because like he's walking through the rain like with that Alan Grant hat on uh-huh. like, you know like the 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 the, the woods um the there's this little kind of like fortress thing that they have going on it looks sick man mm-hmm. um also there's this like moment that I can never get out of my head when um when Mighty Joe Young and Co bring Malcolm to Caesar and they kind of like slam him into the ground and. Like Malcolm does this thing where he's just like he he's on the ground and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> like he does the lean back and I'm just like, what? It's always just so funny to me, dude. Like it just looks so like goofy. I don't know why. It's like trust me, they're not worried about you, guy. Um, <laughs> oh, I know what you're talking about. He like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah I see it. Um, it. Just looks so goofy. Yeah, I don't, I don't he looks know like why. a vampire, like coming out of a coffin, like oh, <laughs> right. Um, yes, because I think it's just the way, like he just keeps like his, he keeps staring, like he's got his eyes wide open as he's coming up on the rise. And <laughs> now, yeah, it, <laughs> like he's got his hands like it outstretched. Out, that's never going to leave my mind. Um, <laughs> But uh, subtle, <laughs> subtle parts of movies that get misinterpreted. Part twelve, because um, it's in the trailer. I'm pretty sure as well. I remember like laughing at it. I was, what the <laughs> fuck like, is that? Not like Christ has <laughs> risen, my guy. Calm down. Um, <laughs> but uh, he's in his like little poncho and shit. Yeah, he's in his like Cal Kestis Jedi Survivor poncho. Um, He's brought before Caesar. That's, uh, that's day proof of pool. <laughs> he's brought before Caesar. <laughs> uh, he has to. Sh- he has to show him the dam. I've got something I, I want to show you. Uh, you know, he lays it all out for him. Town used to be run on nuclear power, but that's been gone for a while. Uh, does any of this make any sense to you? The oh, lights. <laughs> yeah, I, I do love that because um, on this rewatch, I was like sitting there watching him because it cuts to him like explaining like you know what they need to do, and he's talking about. Like he he he's speaking in full sentences to this ape, and I'm just like on this rewatch, I'm just like this is fucking ridiculous. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like he's full explaining like thermodynamics and shit to this to this, for lack of a better term, monkey. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like this is this is ridiculous, and but I love that the movie pulls back and 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 is like. Yes, this is ridiculous. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. But well, because like, even you know, to us, what, it's kind of like we wouldn't even, I wouldn't know that. I, okay. What do you need me to do? I can't, I don't right. know how to do this. How the fuck do you do it? Um, right. the, the ape's like, I don't even wipe my own ass. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> like, I have no interest in this. Um, 
Like literally, like, <laughs> dude, it must is it must smell <sighs> Jesus feral in there, man. Like they are. That's something that I uncover in this movie. It's just these these guys. These guys hurl their yeah, faces. Yeah. Well, they forget. show up, the humans show up, and they have bidets, and they're like, son of a bitch. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, it's after he gets captured, uh, he shows him, yeah, again, the the dam. Um, you know, there's a, a, a bit of a, a break right there, and he basically says, hey, they're going to allow us to stay, but we got to give them the guns. Hard cut to them just smashing the guns with rocks and stuff. Ah, so I love good. that. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, and you get this kind of like I, I, the sense again when you're when you're seeing Koba just stare at the fucking humans, and just stare right at him, and it's just like God, he, uh, he's so terrifying too, right? And, and it's again these moments of dissension that he's trying, you know, to to really appeal to Caesar. If they get more power, they're going to be more powerful. They're going to be harder to stop. Uh, why don't we destroy them now? What you know, while they're weak, um, you know, he's basically saying, Caesar saying, why even attack? How many apes die over what? Just because we can, you know, like if they're coming, if they're coming here, it's because they're desperate. And I mean, if I can use that desperation to cause peace, I will, you know, for the better, for the greater good. Uh, and that's when you get the great human work thing, uh, which is just a, so good, man. Whew, man, incredible scene. And, um, and, and right after that, like you know, Caesar, he 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 stands up, right? So he's kind of like asserts dominance over him, and he's just like, right. "You will listen to me." Right. And Cobra does that little bow, sort of like outstretched hand thing for trust, or um, kind of like in this case, forgiveness. And I, I'm pretty sure at this point, Cobra has no, like he's he's only doing it to show, like on a surface level, like he has right. no. Mm-hmm. Um, intention to actually seed, like to to actually go along with Caesar's um, plan here, right? Yeah, the 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 stew is just slowly being stirred right now when it comes to Koba. Um, uh, we uh, I don't give a fuck about the drawing, to be honest. That might be one of my things in this movie. I'm just like, okay. the oh, the kid drawing the drawing. I'm just like, I get it, man. You'd fucking draw. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, oh, okay, whatever. Um, I understand. I get it. I do love in the center of like their little ape town. There, there's an hourglass like thing. It's the same thing that was in Will's the top oh, the of window? Will's house. Yeah, that little window. There's a wooden one in the door when you come in, and I just now noticed it for the first time. I was like, "Son of a bitch!" Uh, but um, we get a little bit more information on our characters. We see Malcolm is pushing himself to the brink. Um, says that you know it's it's all about Alex. I don't want him to have to see things like he's already seen. Um, we find out more about Ellie and Malcolm and, you know, Carver as well with, you know, basically hates these fucking apes. Um, you know, and again, you, you just get the sense that there's like, it's interesting because Carver, you know, you, maybe he'd lost somebody, maybe he didn't, but I feel like he's got this prejudice just in like, yeah, that's what they did. They killed all of us. It's like, well, no, they didn't. You're just ignorant versus like, right. I, I I don't know if he's ever, you know, I'm sure people he knew died, but not like, Oh, my wife and kids were eaten alive, you know, or my, or they died. I feel like it's more or less just a thing of like general ignorance. Whereas the people who have lost somebody to this, Ellie and, and Malcolm don't actually feel the same way. You know, they're like, Correct, we've yeah. actually lost people in this and we don't feel right. that way. He says it's the simian flu, which he attributes to the apes killing, I guess, the people he loved or the people he knew, but, like, that's not the case, right? Right, yeah. Um, I, I At least that's what I take from Carver. He just feels like that guy who's just like, I just don't fucking like him. And it's like, why? You know, and, and it just seems like this kind of... <laughs> Black I don't know. people, am I right? Yeah, kind of, yeah. There's that one guy at work who's like, listen, dude, I'm not racist, but it's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Every sentence say. that starts with, I'm not racist or I'm not sexist. Yeah. I mean, I can guarantee you it's going to be sexist or racist. <laughs> oh, I beat him to the punch. I'm like, listen, I am an avid racist. I was like, but my thing is... <laughs> That way it's off. The fact that you need to start your sentence with I'm not racist. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. Listen, I'm not a pedophile, but um no I'm just, <laughs> but um we uh we see them kind of talking over dinner about lost children, lost spouses. Uh Carver really kind of, you know, gives it to him. Oh, I'm the asshole, huh? And and gets sent off. He's he wants to stay up and um 
But what's interesting is when he goes, well, I think we should stay up in shifts, you know, and they go, why? They took all of our guns. And it's like, not all of them. And that's kind of like, yeah, why would you suggest that unless you had a gun? And, you know, you don't know it as of yet. But, yeah, he's packing that shotgun. Cobb is a little, he's a little tightly wound. He needs to just have a little, yeah. he needs to chuck the chicken. You know, right. he needs to. Yeah, you need to interbreed, man. You got to find you some ape chick. <laughs> uh, District 9 style. Yeah. No interspecies relations. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but he's like one of those guys that goes to Vietnam and like hates him at first and then ends up marrying like a Vietnam Vietnamese yeah. lady at the end. <laughs> right. Um has got a hand job in cargo shorts since Nam. <laughs> <laughs> um let me see here. Um uh, yeah, they lose This they is talk. um well uh, we're we're kinda going to San Francisco now because we're following Cobra. Right. Yeah. Um <clears throat> who's kind of like on this reconnaissance mission, but like this is one of the the moments in the in the movie where the the score I really start to like really dig like because you transition over to like the um, like Cobra and the two apes sort of like scaling the the Golden Gate Bridge and it's like dun, 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 and I'm just uh-huh. like oh yeah I, I dig it man I like it it's cool um, but yeah Cobra comes across these two sort of like guards who are um, practicing on the firing range and. I do like that we get two scenes with these with these guys. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not like Cobra just kills them like right off the bat. He kind of like sizes them up first and figures out that they're not the sharpest tools in the shed and maybe I can actually outwit them here. Um, <clears throat> and this scene is incredible, dude. Like the 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 tension of like, you know, these two pointing their guns at him and Cobra actively trying to decide what how to do how to deal with the situation. Um, you know, knowing that he will get shot if he starts to attack. And the music builds and builds and builds and then it's just released with the raspberry. <laughs> and I'm just like, it's so good. It's yeah. so fantastic. And then yeah. the little shot of like Cobra as he walks away and he drops the act. It's just like, ugh, I had to fucking do that. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like, oh, it's so good. It's so good. Well, and I think I I, I think the guy on the left is a comedian. <sighs> I think he was on like the Bernie Mac show and stuff back in the day. But I I, I might be missing. Misrem- that was like 20 years ago. So I might be like mistaking. Him. Oh, OK. Um, the other guy, the one with the long hair, Kevin Rankin, he's been in a bunch of stuff. He was in like White House Down. He will be in Breaking Bad when we get to it. Um, oh, cool. I'm pretty. Pretty sure we've talked about him on the podcast. I can't remember what movie, but um, that name sounds familiar. Yeah, let me. He usually plays like stereotypical, like 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 Nick Poyles. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he was. Oh, there we go. He was in Hello High Water. He was Billy Rayburn. He was. Uh, it was Billy Rayburn. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Nah, this is gonna take too long. Um, yeah. <laughs> the. Uh, uh, like you said, we get this great scene with Koba. I love, I love the tension here. I love the way that this is ratcheted up, and that he doesn't, you know, I don't have to make a move right now. The the number one power is in, is Intel, and I know now where I can find weapons. Uh, and I know again, like you said, I, I found an ex- exploitation in these fucking idiots that I can kind of exploit. Um, back at the uh, eight base, sorry, he was the he was the bank the bank manager in Hello High Water. That's Billy Rayburn. Oh, okay. There's gotcha. only one bank manager in in the movie. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, back at the eight base, like you said, we get this great team with Ellie and Alex. Um, we have trouble as we uh, kind of get this cave in that happens on Carver, who ironically has to get pulled out by the apes, which is hilarious. Um, it's it's like the it's like the skinhead that gets a heart transplant by a black doctor, and I'm like, yes, oh, that's so good, <laughs> that's so fucking good. Um, God damn, I don't. Where, where'd you get your degree? Yeah. <laughs> um, it's like, like, dude has never seen the inside of a university, and he's just like, where'd you get your degree? Right, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. They say that uh, white people still rock and roll, but I don't know. I think it's the other way around sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, uh, he's he's the one guy that can just has barely any proof in it somehow. Like, yeah, you know, they used to say they were slaves, but I think it was, uh, you know, when the Irish came in on the in the 20s, it's like, oh, okay, <laughs> calm down, my guy. Um, and then the Italians. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
but like I said, he gets saved by the the apes. Um, you know, we have this great moment. Really, our relationship is starting to get just when it's starting to get good. Uh, you know, we're playing with Cornelius, and lo and behold, it's Cornelius stumbles uh, upon a shotgun, and the bubble has fucking burst now. Um, you know, this really puts the whole thing in really, really grave danger. Um, and, I, don't, uh, I don't know if you mentioned, um, just real, real quick. I just don't want to go past it without it being unmentioned, but um, the birth of Caesar's son, right? Did we go oh ahead? no, yeah, no, I did skip that. Thank you. No, oh, no, no, that's all right. I'm just like, there's not really that much to talk about there, but like, yeah, just before we get the discovery of the shotgun, there's a really nice moment between Ellie and and the the son. It's it's actually really mm-hmm. adorable. Yeah. Um, because that that uh, yeah. It, yeah, he looks he looks amazing. He looks awesome. Well, yeah, and like I said, you know, you're really starting to get these great moments of brevity, and, the, and you know, she's playing with him, and everyone's smiling, and even Caesar seems kind of relaxed, and then you know, this all kind of breaks bad. Um, and he tells him, "Human, go now." You know, human gets the fuck. Out. It's not that you had a gun, you know, and it's not that a gun was pulled on me. It's that my my, my brand new child was here and discovered the gun. Right. Like that's that's the fucking that's like the biggest issue here. Um, yeah, you pointed a gun at my son and said, "I'll kill you." Like right, right, bro, right. Um, and you can see it actually in the next scene when they come back in on horseback. There's that little glass uh, diamond above the door when they come in on their horses in case oh, you're yeah. looking for it. I see it now. Um, Caesar rushes to Cornelia. Um, again, we get Malcolm pushing his fucking luck. He's asking for a beheading. Uh, he uh, <laughs> he says, listen, we can, we can help her out. We're not all like him. We didn't know he had a gun. Um, Ellie has medicine. Well, yes, yes, 100%. And I, and I feel like that I feel like a, a lot of people have been in this position before, but even when we started this podcast, there was kind of a joke of like, uh, yeah, like I know your family's Muslim. How Muslim are you? And you were like, yeah, <laughs> you're, I know you're Southern. How Southern are you? And we were, we were both like not that fucking Southern and not that fucking Muslim. You know, That's, I was just like, I was just like, well, you contacted me. So I'm sure you've got, <laughs> our, you're somewhat okay with other skin colors. So. Yeah. Right. But it was funny. You kind of had to, you know, we didn't really know each other. You kind of had to pat each other down at the door, but that's kind of like, I feel like, um, you know, someone's like, oh, man, you know, they know your brother or your dad. And it's like, yeah, but I'm, yeah. I'm really not like them. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit different. Uh, you know, and and I, it, it sucks having to kind of prove that case. I did think it was weird when you asked me to move my remove my my prayer helmet, <laughs> my prayer hat. When you sent I, me I a Bible a little, and a rosary in the right. mail. I thought, um, I thought that was a little weird, but yeah, yeah that's fine. I guess it's um, sacrifices we make, right? Yeah. <laughs> sacrifices for this podcast. Uh, but yeah, he, he kind of is making the pitch. We're not all bad people. You know, it's, it's, it's just, uh, there are bad seeds. And mm-hmm. the, the, the problem is that Caesar has not been in leadership, even though 10 years is a long time to be in leadership. He hasn't had a conflict with some kind of mutiny with some kind of uprising right. with Koba. He's, he's been in isolation. Sorry. He's been in, in leadership in isolation. Right. So he's really only had to lead his own people, mm-hmm. but never in the face of a threat from an outside community of another ape community or another human community. Right. Um, like, like the, he's never really faced a challenge like this. It's a bit so, easier to keep people in line when there are no other yeah. options. You know, it's like, yeah, oh, I'll just go absolutely. work at Burger King versus McDonald's. It's like, no, there's only Wendy's here, motherfucker. And I think I think it's really astute of Cobra to kind of use that as an argument. Like, you know, kind of like Cobra to be like, hey, like, I mean, you know, like, because at one point, like, there is – very early on, like after he shoots Caesar, um, Cobra assumes power, mm-hmm. but he doesn't do it like straight away. He's like, oh, they shot Caesar, like whatever. And we then, fight like, for kinda, Caesar. Yes. Right. We fight for Caesar. But like then it becomes like, no, these are Cobras. Like everyone follow Cobra now. Right. Like, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's not like, yeah. Like my point is that like Cobra eventually sees an opportunity where he's like, Caesar has led us, but he hasn't dealt with a problem like this before. And I think I can. I think I can deal with this. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, no, I think that's a great point. Um, like I said, we he ends up uh, 
you know, uh, giving Cornelia these meds, they kick Carver out. I uh, said, you've got one day. Uh, we might need a little bit more. Again, pushing, you know, again, asking and reaching. And mm-hmm. it's like, what day? And I, I love that. And he's like, apes will help. <laughs> and just he kind of throws that in at the very end. I think he realizes how ridiculous he's like, oh, okay. Um, so they they at least they get the one more day for for helping Cornelia, which I, I don't think they know she's a hundred percent like back to you know normal yet. But uh, Kobo returns and he puts Caesar on blast for treating humans uh, too lightly. But Caesar whoops that ass. Uh, you know he he he, <laughs> he chokes him out like a bitch in front of everybody. Uh, oh, dude. And uh, okay, uh, so I don't I don't love the ape on ape skirmishes like that's not really like my my bag with these movies they're very like, sloppy like, they're very, just two animals beating I'm on just each like, other yeah i mean like that's it that's exactly it it's like what kind of variety can you get but like the lead up to those skirmishes is what i like the, sorry is what i like the best because mm-hmm. it's like man cobra here when when he's shouting for caesar, caesar! Right. like the the again the sound design is just absolutely incredible man and you really it, it like Cobra's hate for humans and Cobra's uh, disdain for Caesar's choice to keep the humans around and actually assist the humans. It's right. so palpable. It's mm-hmm. so palpable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, looking at Maurice's face when he steps in between Malcolm, Alex, and Cobra, is I'm like Ron Perlman. <laughs> like I was looking at it for a second. You look like fucking Ron Perlman, dude. Um, but uh, like we said, he he ends up uh, you know, kind of challenging him in front of everybody. He uh, he beats the dog piss out of him, uh, and I, I love when he does. The, you know, they do the uh, the bow, the the hand. You know what I mean? The uh, this thing, the hand yes. uh, gesture yeah. that they do when the, they kind of submit. In the first one, it's do they say it's a sign of trust? It's sign I think of he's something. asking for permission. I think it's I think oh, it's asking right. for permission. Uh and and when Caesar, I mean his hit the molecules of his hand are barely touching the molecules of Cobus hand and he's already gone. And like you said it's total lip service. It, and the plot begins to kind of be, uh to form for us in in Cobus head. We kind of get to see the wheels begin to turn on Right. That. When he says when Cobus says forgive me and man like it's just crazy that we're talking about a computer generated character here. Um, that's able to kind of display these kinds of emotions. But like when Cobra lifts his hand to ask for forgiveness or permission and he says, forgive me, when he says, forgive me, you can tell in his face that he does not mean this. Like this is there, this is a hundred percent service level. He's only doing this for show. Mm -hmm. There is no meaning or intent behind this asking for forgiveness because he has no, um, he has no intention to yeah back off this this is the kid who wants to play tag but then when you go to tag them he goes oh i quit and just lays down real quick and you're like fucking motherfucker it's insane that we're able to get that level of emotion from a computer generated character right so effectively well and and that's something we haven't really talked about is the the actors behind the ape i think that a hundred percent you know there i i know they put some sun people out of work by casting like like professional actors in the spot but to an extent i think that does 100 percent help legitimize the the performances in this movie but at the same time you get the best of both worlds you get the emotion of the human face the human eyes the human reaction but you get to make it look however you want i think that's really key i think that's really important man i was really pulling for toby kevill after this movie came out but then he just started bullshit like he was dr doom in that terrible fantastic four movie he was in warcraft he was in that terrible ben-hur remake um, oh, are we talking about the McPoyle? No, no, no. I'm talking about um, Toby Campbell who plays Cobra. Uh, oh, the, yeah. okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. He just, man, like, I was like, all right, man, like this guy's, this guy's, he's going to work after this. And mm-hmm. he worked, but for a paycheck, man. I'll tell you what, he was in a great episode of Black Mirror called- um, I remember that. The Entire History of You. Yeah. It's yes. Really good, that one. I yeah. remember that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, this is the kind of the the plot of Caesar. Uh, I'm sorry, the plot of Coba putting into effect. He talks to to Blue Eyes. He says, "I fear for your father's life." I think he's trusting you know the the apes too much. Uh, you know, and he's successfully kind of drawing a line in between the two of them. He is kind of winning this 
you know, even though Blue Ice is like, oh, that's my dad, that's my dad, that's not really, you know, Koba is being somewhat effective and and at least partially confusing him. Um, And uh, because right after that, I think, is where we get the... um, I'm sorry, let me pull my notes up. I think right after that is when we get him going to to actually get the guns and he kills the two, the two guys, which is another great scene. Um, you know, him blowing the alcohol right in their face if for a digital character oh. to be doing that, that kind of interaction is hard to really make work when it's not a hundred percent right. You know, I, I assume that was just somebody in mocap spitting water up on him. Probably. Oh, I'm sure. You I'm sure, know, yeah. but that's why it looks so, cause it's some, it's something that's not real. And it's kind of like, I don't know, seeing the water come out of its mouth. It's like, holy shit, man, that's just that's so weird. You know, it's it's like watching Who Framed Roger Rabbit and you see them open doors and stuff. Like, how the fuck? You know, like that that, that always. How did you make that happen? Right. Yeah. That always kind of blows my mind. Um, Something I love about this um, when he executes these two guys is, again, just the escalation in this. So, like, you know, these two guys. They don't really lower their guard, right? The one, the the kind of like one with the shorter hair. He's he's always got his gun sort of like trained on Cobra, um, and then you know like his <laughs> Cobra starts chilling. He sits down. He spits the 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 rum in their face, and then and then he grabs the gun, right? And then they start to panic, but then they start to relax a little bit when you know they see Cobra just kind of like waving it around. He doesn't know how to use it, and then. Cobra blows them away, right? Yeah. And very, very smartly, Cobra blows away the one with the weapon, right? Mm-hmm. Not the one without the weapon. And uh, it's so, like, the execution of the second guy, like, the the look in Cobra's face is so, like, that again, the hate is just palpable, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, even though... It's not you personally who experimented on me. I, I am still going to meet out this vengeance. Right. Yeah. I'll be the one to di- to to dish dish this out. Um. Let me see here. Caesar whoops that ass. Blah blah blah. Shattered through. Okay. So um, the power is finally restored. Uh, we get this great uh moment with the the song "The Weight" by uh the band. Actually, they're called the band. Uh, which is really fun. I've I've heard of I've heard of them, but I never knew they did the song. Take a load off, sad. Um, oh yeah, this is this is um this is where I really I kind of want to highlight the cinematography in this movie because mm. it, it's done by Michael Saracen, who you know he 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 hasn't done too much, but he did do something huge. Um, oh, he did like Midnight Express, so he's been like working since the seventies. This guy, damn, like, you know, yeah, he's. Yeah, for like, yeah, just wild stuff. And um, he shot Prisoner of Azkaban for Alfonso Cuaron, and um, yeah, and then he didn't really do much else after this except for uh, War of the Planet of the Apes. But um, this this scene in particular, like the, I love the way this movie looks because the shadows are so. This is my photography shit coming in, but the shadows are so dark. But like, the saturation is all the way up and the lights. So like when the 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 gas station is lit up here, like the blues and the purples look so mm. vibrant and it really stands out amongst the browns and the blacks of the forest and it looks so gorgeous. Yeah, it, it almost seems like a fallout like location, you know, like the like yeah. those those vaults that you find overrun with vegetation and stuff in the games. Um yeah, I I think not only that, but that that shot, the one shot of like the gas station and like there's like trees in the foreground and it's like there's there's this thing. If you took this shot out of context, it's like there's this thing this from civilization mm-hmm. that's in nature that should not that does not right. belong, and it's just so like jarring. I, I love mm-hmm. that shit, man. I love it. Um- the small victory is shattered, though, when uh, Carver is killed, unbeknownst to the group, and Caesar is shot. Uh, we do find that Cornelius back on her feet, that uh, that little Cornelius is uh, is going to be fine. Um, you know, and Coba uh, assumes command and leads the attack on the colony. You know, we can kind of take this bite as a whole uh, leading up to the fight on on the colony, because, again, it's just kind of like 
ah, man, it sucks. It's like, you know, uh, Cornelia is fine. The baby is fine. Nobody died. The humans are going back. They didn't have to take up more time. The power's back on. Everybody's everybody's happy. And it's like, it's, you know, so it is kind of Koba that ends up being the one to light that powder keg that kind of sends everything up. Um, you know, but it, it immediately, uh, you know, be, because their act of kindness was not this big, explosive, bombastic assassination thing. Like Koba's thing gets so much more attention because it's this loud, violent act. But then just going up there very quietly giving Cornelia some medicine, it's just kind of like, all right, and she's good. You know, like that's basically all it is. It's not like she's then paraded on the shoulders of everybody through the monkey town. You know, it, it doesn't really work that way. Um, but Caesar is shot. He's he's assumed dead. Uh, Koba uh, assumes command. They they he lights the fucking place on fire. I'm like God damn, dude. Like uh, I guess that's again. I don't understand. I I don't really understand that. Other than it is it an is it an attempt to be like, well, now we have to go in there and take their home. Like now we have to go in here. Right, like, we're forced out now. This is my favorite moment in the movie. Um, is this assassination slash burning down of the of the village? Um, it's such a uh, Mufasa slash Scar moment of like you know uh, just mm-hmm. like I killed your father, but like <laughs> but but they're the ones that did it, and you know it's it, it's um when I saw this in the cinema, I I still did not I I did not predict this coming at all. You know, I knew Cobra was angry at Caesar. I didn't think that he would stage this assassination and blame it on the humans to, you know, light a powder keg. Um, but man, what a way to do it! You know, what a like, what a fantastic moment of just like Caesar looking down. You know, the the gun is just in the shadow, so he can't really spot the gun. So he thinks, you know, Cobra's just kind of like looking at him, and then he's, you know, you you see the. You see the the questions in Circus's face in yeah, uh, as Caesar, fun? and you're just like he, he's like, "What's going on here?" But it's it's too late, right? He raises the gun, he shoots him, and he gets shot in the chest. Um, my one complaint is like, you know, like Cobra, I've I've seen you hold down the trigger. <laughs> right. I, know you, I know you know that gun fires multiple bullets, so I don't know why you just fired one other than you know, right <laughs> yeah. story, right? But um. Man, like again, the the cinematography here as the village burns and Cobra has blue eyes and he's you know like resting his forehead against yeah. his forehead as they're all kind of like scattering and you know Cobra's like pointing at the gun to blame it on the gu- on on the humans. He's like human gun, and you know he's like humans burn our villages. And then you know there's no score here until you get Maurice's Maurice turning to the humans and saying it's like Go. his only word and in the whole in the whole yeah, movie I'm pretty sure yeah and it's so wonderfully staged you know, this is this is this is blockbuster filmmaking at its oh finest. that's what he said like, it's this run is, yeah it's like dun bum bum and run. he's like <laughs> yeah run 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 run, run. <laughs> run. yes <laughs> that's right yeah um and yeah, this is blockbuster filmmaking at yeah. its finest. Mm. Like, I mean, this is this is this is why Matt Raves is in charge of the Batman universe for DC. Yeah, man. and I'll like, be honest, this is why he has the case. It's, to the it's hard for me to think of a better, more recent trilogy of movies. You know, the the first 100%. one's good, but the last two on their own are just like fucking hell, man. They're just powerhouse of like sci fi action film, you know, absolutely. And, uh, it just absolutely knocks out, they crush it so hard. Um, but we, uh, we, we, you know, again, we, we end up seeing Koba who leads the attack on the colony. We get this dip into Dreyfus's life, uh, like what we kind of talked about earlier. Uh, again, nobody is just a villain, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There, there's there's three dimensions to every character in this movie, which is you know it's like, guys, you were assigned to make a Planet of the Apes movie. You didn't need to go this hard, but you went so right. hard, <laughs> and I'm glad right. you did. But like, um, dude, the the decision to drop out all sound and all music as we cut over to Dreyfus's kind of like colony, just dancing and singing mm-hmm. and having right. a good time before all the shit goes crazy. Right. It's well, awesome, man. It's such a great, and, and I, great and I choice. think that it's an interesting t- choice to 
to show everybody else who is celebrating, they're dancing, they're jubilant, they're, you know, they're jubilant. We're trying to reach other colonies with our stronger radio now because we've got this power back. Um, but it's Dreyfus who, while everyone else is looking to the future, he can't let go, you know, he can't let go of the past and like ultimately ends up leading to a huge part of his downfall. It's just that he can't, you know, can't, just can't make peace. It's kind of like those, those people, you know, those post-apocalyptic kind of characters that are like, I've been out here too long. You know, I, I just don't, I don't even take those chances anymore. I, I shoot first and ask questions later because I know, I, yeah, I might win if I do it peacefully, but I know I'll win if I kill you. And it's like, you can't, there's no half measures in the planet of the apes. You know, you, you gotta have full measures. Um, and this is the scene where, you know, you prove why you hire Gary Oldman, right? I mean, mm -hmm. like, this is this yeah. is why. Well, and, to, I mean, you know, you've got him literally shedding tears, you know, over over this. And then two seconds later, he's running through the streets going, sound the alarm. And they're they're turning and yeah. he's, you know, the throwing down of the weapons and stuff. It's it's just an absolutely incredible, incredible turn that he pivots in. It's like, uh, you know, th again, at the. Shedding tears over an iPad that's uh, running iOS yeah. <laughs> one. Well, and Love I and I, uh, I I think it's interesting, kind of like um, how most people emotionally, you know, couldn't couldn't make that kind of turn. You know, like most normal people would be like, I, I just I like the fact that that it's like he can go from you know, him his his you know anger can go from. Uh, outward to inward, right back to outward at the drop of a hat, you know, and you could say he is in maybe some kind of depression over his wife and his kids, uh, you know, being dead. But I, I love what Melfi says in The Sopranos is depression is rage turned inwards, you know, that that's just this. He is a bottomless pit of just rage that just can't like it's it's not going to be stopped. And like as much as I feel like he is a reasonable person and he could be reasoned with it. He's just too far gone, you know, to be saved. And I, and I think that there's even kind of some hints in that in his dress, the kind of eighties, nineties, desert, desert storm kind of look that he has the glasses, the mustache, like I say it, it's this yeah. kind of thing of the past of just can't fucking let go. Um, and uh, we get the attack from California street, which I think is absolutely incredible. Um, again, I, I love seeing, uh, the street get used again after we see them rise with it in the trolley car. Um, this, uh, this yeah, is awesome, this, this is this whole onslaught. Whew, um, you know, and, and we can kind of take this whole battle as as a big bite here. Um, you know, I, I I love. I don't know why I love the small detail of him saying there, California Street, because yeah, immediately in my notes I put the Battle of California Street. Um, and you know, just seeing all of them riding horseback. And, you know, they're not surprised they have weapons, which I like. They say they said, like, yeah, they might have gotten into some of our guns, but they're apes. like we're people, you know, like we still have the upper the upper hand. And I'm like, man, you know, they're twice your size. They're probably four times faster than you. You know, they could they could rip your dick off through your fucking throat. Like they could just pull in down your throat and pull your dick. Out. And then they, had yeah, to fire and now they know how to fire weapons. Not only that, they can speak audibly and non audibly through sign language. And it's like, you're fucked, man. Like. Why, why aren't you if this happened, if you drop me into this world and I look at Gary Oldman and Jason Clark and everybody living like they're living in, you know, like something out of Mad Max. And then I see the apes drinking like clean water and living up in the mountains. I'm like, I'm living with the apes, motherfucker. Like I am 100 percent picking the apes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I may never wipe my ass again, but I'm yeah, I'm definitely be like yeah. Caesar, man. Uh, can we arm wrestle? Uh, I would love to hang out with you. Like <laughs> Caesar just seems like such a you know again for someone who probably has fifty lines in the movie, just comes across as he's so fucking cool. He's just cool, you know. He is that Gary. What happened to a strong, silent type, Gary Cooper? You know, he's kind of got he's kind of got that that leading man, uh, Clint Eastwood kind of quiet uh, stoicism that I that I like. Um, but uh, when, what, uh, dude, when when Cobra dual wields uh -huh. the uh, the two machine guns on horseback, I'm just like. There is nothing in science fiction that even yeah, comes close right? to, to how cool that is, man. That you know what, man. Um, when I it, it just threw me back to like in Halo Two, the first time when you were like, 
when, when you get the prompt to look, when you look at a gun on the ground in Halo Two and you mm-hmm. get the prompt, press X to dual wield. I was oh like, shit! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like just before the uh, you know to give yeah. the Covenant back their bomb, like that whole scene. Mm-hmm. Like you know, I was just like that. That changed my life as a kid. The fact that you could hold two guns and fire them at the same yeah. time. And the, I was thrown uh, back. I was thrown back by watching Cobra. The, the best movie. one to me in Halo 2 was the SMG and the pistol. Because you just, oh, dude, oh yes. man, you fucking wrecked with that thing. Yeah. Oh, dude, so, but you'd also have like the plasma pistol. Sorry, we're going <laughs> deep off the road. You'd have the plasma pistol in one hand, right? Which, you know, when you charge it up, can get rid of the shields. And then you'd have an it's SMG like noob tube them. to fuck them up. Um, or mutant yeah. combo. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah. By the way, I follow Colin the Red yeah. on YouTube. He's got oh, some thank great, you. Uh, the Red Armada. YouTube that's my YouTube handle. Um, but uh, <laughs> I fucked up your username. <laughs> well, I, I, I it, no, it was the, the same for a long time. And then I changed it, and I was like, ah, I kind of like Red Armada. I don't, I don't know if I like having my name in there, you know. Um, but the uh, the interesting thing about this battle is that we kind of, I like the ebb and flow of it. Of that, at first we're like, oh, these humans are going to obliterate them, and right off the bat, we get kind of, oh, fuck. And then we feel like, okay, the apes are going to fuck them off. And then this like a ATV or whatever they call this thing, this fucking battle battlefield five tank comes out and we just like an APC, APC kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. The incredible rotating shot of like, I think it would, it would have been oh, so, dear. it would have been far too much for Koba to go in here and he puts like the headset on and starts driving the tank. That that's not going to happen. That's fucking ridiculous. But it's the fact that that is <laughs> this thing is obviously stuck in drive and he's just grabbing the gun and shooting it, which is something. It's no less than what he was already doing. Um, I do like that. And, and, and you know me, you know me, man. Like just the single static shot of like just the the rotating turret yes. as we just follow Cobra fucking him up. Yes, and absolutely. It's it's so so gorgeous, man. Like Matt Reeves just absolutely dominated with this movie. I, I will t- I, like something that uh, absolutely broke my heart the first time I saw this was when they finally get that wall down the perimeter wall down and once once they yeah. get it down and you see the guy on the radio actually start to hear a voice and then he has to just pack up shop and run because like he can't stand there. Yeah. And, but then later on, I think Malcolm explains like, yeah, they've already contacted like a military group in the North. Like they've, I guess they've already made con that's who he's talking to once they get down to the bottom of the tower. Um, but that is kind of heartbreaking at first of like, Oh my God, you were right there. You were about to make contact. And then you're like, Oh no, they did make contact like later on. Um, this yeah, just an incredible scene. Uh, and seeing everybody get fucked up, the the rotating shot, um, Dreyfus shooting the barrels with the rocket launcher. It's just like we've been kind of blue balled this whole movie when it comes to action, and then it just like, Ugh! like it definitely it fires both barrels of that. Yeah, nut, you know that. So this is where because um, I I did watch this movie in two parts last week, and um, this is where Steph kind of like tuned in. Um, and I was like, she's like, God, there's a lot of action in this movie. And I was like, yeah, but over the last hour, we haven't really had mm-hmm. that much. So you're just seeing like the carnage. You, you know what I wish had the tone and the depth and like the 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 kind of uh, character thing. I feel like if they could take this kind of uh, level of quality of, of just tone and character and apply this to the Transformers franchise, if we could have these kind of movies, but it's Transformers. Oh, my God. You could do... So you were you were saying Transformers? I was thinking Jurassic. Yeah, or Jurassic. Like, I think you could do pretty much the but same. See, the same. I thing feel like Jurassic. at least Jurassic has already had a, f- a few good movies. You know, like uh, like really objectively mm. great movies. Um, versus oh, yeah, like Transformers, sure. yeah. just kind of like mm, you know, they're not like they're definitely not critic. <laughs> Critic, their you know their box right. office. Uh, R- R- Rise of the Base looks good, but it looks like some of the stuff that I've seen from it. I'm just like, I don't yeah, know, this is this the is beginning of Bubble Bee was cool. I, I, I've watched, I've watched that ten times. Just, yeah. just the beginning. Yeah, same. I, I, the the beginning, and also um, there's a great moment where I think it's when Bubble Bee comes to Earth, and he's like messing with the military, like right at the beginning, and. Um, he he has a showdown with um, I can't remember who the, the the Decepticon was, but it's it's sick. The first twenty minutes of that movie is incredible, yeah. and then it just kind of mm-hmm. drops off a cliff. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But after the battle, we get a uh, drop heck in our human uh, kind of group. They come across Caesar. And at first you're like, holy shit, he really is fucking dead. Uh, and he just barely his eyes start moving. And you kind of you, you it's palpable. And she goes, oh, my God, Malcolm. And you're like, oh, fuck, he's still alive. Um, he ends up explaining to them like, hey, uh, this was not a human attack. This was ape. I need my wife. I need my kids. And you figure out what the fuck is going on. Um, and you kind of see just the, the disparity in Caesar that he knows, like, I, I'm, I've fallen as a leader. I'm, I've been mortally, possibly mortally wounded. I don't know where my wife and children are. Like this is pretty much the lowest that we see him in the entire trilogy. Um, and you know, a- after we finally get, uh, you know, get him picked up by our human group, we see what Koba is doing inside the city hall. Um, and I talked about this earlier, alluding to, or not alluding to, but just straight up kind of talking about him murdering Ash that, you know, he uses Ash's injury as something to kind of like start the, you know, start the, the fight against the humans. He wants to weaponize this tragic kind of event that's happened. Uh, and ultimately, you know, ends up by the end of it, killing the very person that he was trying to make a case about protecting. I th- just think that's so like, cr- I don't know if that you want to call that irony or foreshadowing or whatever you want to call that. Uh, I think it's just absolutely crazy that not only I love that Ash throws the, the kind of like metal prong thing down and says, you know, Caesar wouldn't want me to kill a human not only does does koba not give a fuck about that he he will kill another ape over you not killing the human like it's like a double negative i think he does give a fuck about it i'm i'm, I'm gonna push back what a little bit like when when he says when he says caesar would not want me to kill him um he does he does give a fuck oh no no i mean i mean in like the caesar. sense of like you, you oh, know, okay. not only okay. does, yeah. does yeah, I, I think it's interesting that you have a character who's saying Caesar would not want me to kill a human, you know, and that's like going up this way. And then Koba is double negative. Right. Like, no, I'll kill the human and I'll kill you. You know, like that's the yeah, double. Yeah. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm that's a like double on ex- yeah. like no, no, no go. Because I think I think if he if he put it another way without mentioning Caesar, I don't think he would have. Mm-hmm. He might have reacted in the same way, but maybe not as harshly. Mm-hmm. But like uh, the the fact that he mentioned his the the former leader saying, you know, like like he's also talking about his fealty, right? Like where his loyalty mm-hmm. is, and it's not to Cobra, and that's what really kind of gets gets up his ass, yes. right? Like that's what well, really kind of like like wounds like what you said. Bit. It's Lion King when the bird is being forced to sing uh, i've got a lovely bunch of mufasa would never have me do this you know it's 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 that the bird kind of rowan atkinson i can't remember the fucking bird's name but i know zazu, it's rowan atkinson motherfucker zazu Where's that's your, what it is jesus christ i don't fucking i was actually Oof. about to say iago but it's like, <laughs> iago is like a shit I, I have no i haven't seen a movie in years I, i've always known it's rowan atkinson so i love bean um yeah but we uh we end up uh kind of rolling up in Caesar's old neighborhood. I like this. Uh I like the fact that it's it's a little fan servicey, but I don't mind it. You know, it could have been any random house, but it, I don't I there are some questions lingering from the first movie that we need not necessarily need answers to, but would like answers to, you know. I, I like that we don't divorce ourselves entirely from Rise, right? I mean like Right. So we we <laughs> When this movie, so when Rise, I was actually doing some reading, when Rise came out and it was such a success, the studio did want a sequel and Rupert Wyatt was actually attached for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until that he was like, oh, I've, I've actually got some scheduling issues. That's when Matt Reeves kind of came in and he's just like, oh. okay, let's, you know. Thank God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank God. Because Rupert Wyatt went on to make um, Snow White and the Huntsman, so fuck that movie. Uh, and it's like, I mean, I'm sure Rise was good. I'm sure it would have been a, another movie as that quality or better, but it would not have been this quality of of, of a movie. Oh no, um, no, I don't know. Maybe after the first success, he'd have a little bit more creative control of his own, you know, and, and yeah. be able to do things his way. And because I think we even talked about that a little bit on the bonus episode was that Rise definitely feels a little bit more summer blockbustery, and these definitely feel like they're part of that set of the first three movies. The first one's kind of the this, outlier. This feels like a prestige Oscar-y kind of movie to me um, whenever I think about it. Um, just like mm-hmm. the long shots and the cinematography and the acting, it feels more like a a movie that is kind of going for an Academy Award, even though it's probably not. Um, sorry, but I, I, I actually misspoke. He... 
So Rupert White didn't leave because of scheduling concerns. Um, he wasn't like double booked or anything. He just didn't think that he could hit the date that the studio had set. Um, mm, okay. And he was like, yeah, look, I'm out. <laughs> Oh, good uh, on him for calling it, you know, not yeah. not starting it and not being able to fucking finish it. Like, oh, my God, right. that's the worst. Um, By the way, um, we've covered quite a few Matt Reeves movies. I just realized uh, we did Cloverfield on the feed, on the bonus feed, and we did Let, Let Me, Me In. in. Yeah. Um, we've done this now, and he's only the only other two movies is directed is War of the Planet of the Apes and um, The Batman. The Batman. Mm, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm sure we'll end up covering War soon, uh, honestly, because I'm very keen to watch it. You know, I, I like doing the the first two. Maybe hold we'll, off. We'll on the cover third the one. Batman. I want to cover the Batman. Oh sure. Oh yeah. Of course, yeah. that's going to happen at some point. But War is like, I'm I now I'm nervous to cover that because there's no more meat. You know, it'll be <laughs> we'll have to wait until Kingdom comes out to talk about the new Planet of the Apes movies. Yeah. But. Yeah. Um, we, uh, we we end up taking Caesar back home. Uh, we see that this is the house that he grew up in. Um, Ellie says, I can perform surgery, but I have to have this kit. And Malcolm says, I'll go. Uh, incredible one shot take. Incredible. Just so good. This is like watching this now and, tw- you know, in 2023 and seeing The Last of Us is like, well, co- I mean, Jesus Christ, man. It feels it, like it feels just like it. I've only seen one episode. Grant you. I was going to say, did you did you finish yeah. that? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I haven't. I've only I played, I think, maybe the first fourth or the third of the game, but I wasn't able to finish it. Um, and and but watching the game and I'm sorry, playing the game and watching this was definitely felt like definitely gave me those fallout last of us kind of feels that I that I truly love. Um and just the randomness and the clutter of everything because nothing is trash anymore. You know, it's like when Pedro gives the guy drugs and he gets the plastic baggie What's back. What's the bag bag? Nothing, yeah. nothing is wasted anymore. Um, really lucky for yeah, him. We, that we, it, we, uh, oh, we had that conversation uh, with other people when that show aired like 10 months ago. So, <laughs> you know, welcome, welcome to the uh, yeah. conversation. Yeah, welcome to the, the first episode of, so I got to fucking finish it. Well, now the second season, I think, is getting fucked by the writer's strike. So it's going to be a minute. Yeah, man, it sucks. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on the on the writer strike, but yeah, it's no, like, no, I hate yeah, that. I just think that's. Interesting. I hate that we're gonna probably gonna hit a a wave of just terrible things soon. Yeah, like like we I did get, with Quantum of Solace. It, it is time for an Revenge update. I feel like and, whether whether whose side that you're on is just like okay, this, oh, these, these contracts contracts weren't made oh, yeah. when like streaming services were thought. It, it is an interesting kind of thing to. Uh, to, to, no. to dip your toe into, I I, yeah. I was. And while we're while we're while we're there, <laughs> we should update the Second Amendment too. Because, well, I I, uh, I remember yeah. I was a bit, I, you know <laughs> always been a huge Conan fan, and he put out some of his best shit in the writer strike. That's when he started doing the on locations, and he would spin his wedding ring on the desk and see how long he could get it to go, and that was the show. And it was just like, dude, only Conan could turn thirty five minutes or an hour of dead air into just comedy gold like he would surf the crowd and his desk and just crazy shit you know some people are just talented though but like i mean when you need because you if you're a show if you're a if you're a showrunner if you're a, a filmmaker a director whatever you need a script a, a writer on set True. right because things yeah. are always changing always constantly right you can't have daniel craig actually writing right the script right on set um, the day before that he's supposed to perform it, you just can't. Not everybody can be Eddie Murphy in the first Beverly Hills, and you're just like right. improvising ninety percent of a fucking movie on the day of and absolutely crushing it. Right. Most people, like you said, are not of that caliber. Um, right. And, and and you and I are talking about Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, which is I I would say that would not be nearly as successful if it went for the writers. I mean, like right, the the writing course. in this movie is incredibly strong it's all character incredibly strong it's all character yeah. you know like character yeah. starts on the fucking page you know and like that's the special effects are incredible yes i love the sound design i love the visuals i love the you know the explosions and the fights but it's like nothing none of this matters if the story is dog water you know Absolutely. but it's but it's not it's I it's think- the, it's the best part <laughs> is is the story <laughs> I think it's fair to say that Minard Double Feature stands with the WGA. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, of course. As someone who's fancied themselves a, 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 a very, 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 very amateur writer, it's like that is such hard work. It's just so incredibly hard to do. And like, it um, is cool. 
I, I did see a photo of um, Bob Odenkirk and Mandy Patinkin mm-hmm. just like standing in the picket line. And uh, who? Oh, Jay Leno like went out and bought like donuts for people. Fuck like, him. Was, uh, um, <laughs> no, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> uh, I did see Chris and Jonathan Nolan went out there as well. So I thought that was yeah, really cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyways, back to pre- back to present day, and by present day, I mean uh, t- apparently twenty twenty one in this <laughs> world. Um, uh, we see uh, Malcolm going to get the surgical kit. Lucky for him, he bumps into uh, you know blue eyes, blue eyes, uh, and yeah. he tells him, "Hey, I've got your dad. Your dad's okay, you know, but we, we need to get back and help him." Uh, and it- <laughs> sorry, it just Steph was um, she was sitting there and she's like beat for beat like telling me how this is gonna go she's like oh okay she's about it like like the ape's gonna be the son and he's gonna point the gun and he's gonna let her go and he's gonna lead him back to the, the father i'm like yeah sure it is like conventional it's very it is like lucky yeah yeah it is super conventional but like it's still i like it it's still a good moment yeah, yeah i like it yeah yeah um you know, I, I think you could have done with somebody else discovers Malcolm and that blue eyes has to like hit him with the butt of a gun. And he's like, all right, let's get the right. fuck out of here. Like, let's go. Right. Um, but he uh, he says, you know, no, this is not a human attack. Again, this is Coba. Uh, and Caesar blames himself, uh, you know, that I you know, it's not that I love the humans too much. It's that I loved ape too much. I put too much just because you're an ape doesn't mean you can't do anything wrong. Um, I think is kind of like the the lesson he learns is like, if you're going to watch out for daggers, look for them in your own house first. Um, let me see here. I pull on my notes. Uh, oh yeah. The um, blah, blah, blah. Caesar spots his old home. The group stops. Blah, blah, blah. Right. So blue eyes. He, he has surgery. He blames himself for Coba's betrayal. Uh, Caesar admits that he's too weak to be seen and blue eyes asked to help. Um, again, great line. Ape seek strongest branch you know and he's talking about how bad it is with the leadership of kova that you know the fear is what keeps them in line that maurice and rocket and the ones you know uh loyal to caesar have been basically imprisoned uh and if and, and i like this at the 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 plan the wheel start turning for for caesar that that basically he's i'm not ready to see him yet but i can go ahead and have you start the the fires of of this process uh and kind of stir the stir the stir the hunt stir the honey pot up as it is um yeah let me uh oh i'm sorry i'm trying to read my own writing and it's so fucking hard um the uh, and he ends up freeing the prisoners. Blue eyes does. He's able to kind of get in there and help all them out, which is another great scene. I love the the way that he draws the the glass diamond to kind of as the symbol. Uh, I think I just think that's so fucking cool. Um, him in the review mirror, like just yes, being like, yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and I I like it. It's just a hey, we need a distraction, and they 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 grab their guards and crush all of them. When the it's like oh. Jesus, man. Uh, just this movie can be surprisingly brutal. You know, you just forget that it's like, I don't know. It's like, yeah, man, they're animals. It's like, what do you think? You know, what do you think we are? Like, <laughs> it's kind of, what do you think's going on here? Um, I, Lunch the Knicks. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, yeah, I like that Blue Eyes is able to, to, to get them all out. Um, and we, we get this kind of check in on, um, I keep wanting to say Koba Caesar's Caesar. Caesar's past life with the camera. Um, this is the only scene I don't think that needs to be in here. Um, yeah, I, I get 50. it. I think it's kind of beating a dead horse at this point. Like, um, I, I the uh, the main reason that I like it is that. Um, at first it's like okay the camera still has it's been 10 years and the camera still has a charge and works but it's it's literally left plugged up to something so i'm like okay maybe it charged right until the power went out whatever and it only lasts no. for like 10 seconds but it, but the no. reason that i like the scene is shut up the reason that i like this <laughs> there's no way the s there's no way the sd card lasts that long it just, it's like melted um, the reason that I like the scene is that we, I, I like the fact that it brings the attention that, that Caesar is now looking at Malcolm the way he looked at Will. I think that's important. You know, we need to like, cause there's not a whole lot of reason for either of them to trust each other at this point, you know, now the, the both betrayal on both sides, it's just the, 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 been this insane back and forth. And it seems like the only people who really want peace are Caesar and Malcolm, you know, in his group. 
Uh, it just seems like it just it's just such an uphill battle. And I, I like the fact that we kind of this to me, without this scene, the ending when they put their heads together and he's like, oh, we almost made it, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't feel as earned. And that's why I like this, that he straight up says he's like, he was a good man like you. And I'm like, yeah, I like that. I think that's cool. We finally see Caesar straight up telling him you're a good man, you know, and, and I get it. Action speak louder than words. We've seen that, you know, Malcolm wouldn't be doing all of this if he wasn't a good person and if he didn't care about Caesar, but to see Caesar acknowledge it and be like, yeah, you saved my kid. Like you, you saved me. It just really kind of shows how far their relationship has gone in just a couple of days is the only reason that I like this scene. Other than that, it can, it does feel like a touch of fan service. It does feel a little forced, you know, it's like, how do we, I think it would have been enough to show him looking at that same picture and it's a memory. It's a flashback, you know, and Jason Clark walks up. What are you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm just remembering a good man. And it's like, cool, I'm, I'm down with that. I like the fact that that it, that there are things about Malcolm that remind Caesar about Will and that there are good people and that there are there. If there's if this good man is still here 10 years after the last one I saw, maybe in another 10 years, there'll be even more. You know, it's like I like the fact that he kind of renews that optimism in Caesar about humanity, because at this point, he doesn't really have a whole lot of reason to be optimistic about them. Um, and you know, it kind of answers again, the it answers, but I mean, you know, like, isn't, isn't, isn't the fact that Ellie has patched him up and like, they've brought him here, like, like to safety. I, I don't know. I feel like that's enough. <laughs> I, <laughs> like, you know, I, I don't need, I to- do for, for us, but I feel like you need to have a point where Caesar kind of acknowledges like, yes, I trust you now. Like irrevocably, if you wanted me dead, you, you could have killed me. Like, it, I feel like there has never been a point up until they save him, uh, that they could have just killed Caesar outright and be like, yeah, he's dead. You know, we killed him. You know, it's not until he's weak and wounded and they're like, no, we're not taking advantage of you. Um, I, I feel like uh, to us as the audience, we know they're good guys. You know, we've seen them do nothing but good things, but we need that final push to get that line over for for caesar to just be like, okay we are 100 percent on the same page now um enough to the point that malcolm is willing to turn on his own people which is kind of what we see next um we see that caesar's you know it's been a couple of days he's back up to health uh malcolm says i'll take you through the subway uh he ends up being able to take him up to the point where they take the uh the stairs up to the street um and we see Dreyfus and and the men and they're planning C four on the base. Of, and I I laughed. I was like, there is no way that is. It's like four or five or eight bricks of C four. And I'm like, dude, unless you have twelve more of those going up a hundred feet, you know, in increments, <laughs> there's no way you're bringing this fucking tower down. Like you're delusional. Did he consult with George Bush? Is this what's happening? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> Yeah, I'd, I'd love if, if if Dreyfus. What's your what's your what's your first name? Well, Dreyfus is a code name. My name's Jeb Bush. <laughs> um, Dick Cheney was yeah, my I, godfather. I laughed at that. I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, he, I borrowed his glasses. Uh, I was like, you you really think this C four is going to bring this fucking tower down? I was like, that's laughable. Um, but uh, you know, Malfour. Uh, he's trying to buy some time for Caesar, who's making his way to the top to put an end to Coba and everything. Um, uh, I think it's great when he just holds that guy and he's like, Hey, uh, Dreyfus, and he looks up and he's like, Huh? You know, and he's not expect he's like, What the fuck? Like it totally catches oh, him dude. off. I love that, man. Like, like he's he's kind of like, yeah, he says Dreyfus and he's like, you know, working away, and then it's just like the yeah. look of like surprise, and it's like, yeah, that's that's really well played, yeah. old man. I love it. I, I love it. He's so just caught up. What? What the fuck? Um, he says we have to give him more time. And what? Uh, who the fuck you? T- Again, I, I would love if he were just like, all right, I got a friend up there. All right, don't ask any questions. But he, if if we play it right, <laughs> the war will be over tonight. Um, a guy I knew in the service is up there mm-hmm. talking them down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, um, and we, we get, get an f bomb. Oh wait, which we one? We get an f bomb. Uh, he says, "What uh, Dreyfus says? What the fuck are we doing? Are, are uh, you doing? That's right. Because you only get one f bomb in the PG thirteen. Yeah, right? so, fuck. I didn't even realize. I thought these were rated yeah. R. To be honest, I didn't even realize they were PG thirteen. Um, no, these would not be. Um, yeah, one hundred seventy yeah. million dollars. <laughs> An R rated one hundred seventy million dollar movie. movie. Yeah, no. Um, and we get the so, final fight between Koba and Caesar. What, what did you think about this? I am glad that they didn't draw this out. Um, and 
we were we were talking about this because like this goes on for a while anyway. But I'm glad that you know it's relatively short. Like they could have drawn it out longer, and I'm glad they didn't. Um, this is it's good, man. Like you can see, <laughs> I can't believe I'm, I'm about to talk about two apes's sort of like fighting styles, but this is what I'm talking about mm-hmm. <laughs> right now. Um, you can see um, Cobra's ferocity and. Uh, brutality and just how it's kind of like a flurry of attacks whereas like Caesar is a little bit more composed and chooses where to hit him uh, yeah, like, the, definitely. like the kidney shots and whatever and it's just like yeah like dude like this guy he can he can rock with Creed man in the ring yeah. <laughs> like you know like yeah. he, can, he can take him down well it's it's uh Caesar's playing chess and Cobus playing checkers kind of thing, you know. Right, their fighting style mirrors their leadership styles, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, like um, Cobus is ferocious and aggressive and without um, without uh structure, right? Like there's no there, there's no com- composition to it. It's just a, yeah. a flurry of aggression, right? Whereas like Caesars is a bit more reserved and thoughtful, um, which I really appreciate. But um, yeah, I, I like the way this this looks. Um, again, the effects are incredible. Uh, like this is kind of only really here because we need a big sort of like showdown. Um, but I love the way it ends, right? Like I love the way it kind of like goes down um, with cobra kind of like on that beam and he's like you know he says ape will not kill ape and oh such a great line from caesar you know you are not ape and you know that's the reason why i let him go and it's <laughs> i was just like thinking i was like what kind of justification are they going to give here like in terms of like you know i don't yeah. have to kill you but i don't have to save you <laughs> yeah right um but uh i think it's really well handled um i really dig this finale a lot um yeah this is awesome yeah i i i dig this i i i like it um I, again li- watching them fight one of my favorite moments is at the beginning when they fall off of that crane and as they're fall as they're falling caesar uses his feet to grab Koba's feet and rips him down with them and it's just these little thoughtful kind of like you just flick this little spot and it sends the whole thing spinning uh i think i think is really cool um yeah but the you know again like the the kind of brutality in it and the fact that Koba almost never fight he almost always has like a pipe picked up he goes for a gun you know he's constantly fighting dirty and shooting his own apes in the process of of doing it which is oh, super yeah. important that caesar's brutally trying to avoid any more ape death and that coba has no problem being like oh you threw a spear at me Brah! you know it just drops him on the spot Brah! 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 um but ultimately like you said coba coba not ape uh i think i think is important and we also get the the death of Dreyfus and uh, his two his two men there. Uh, unfor- yeah. you know, or, or fortunately, Malcolm. I I could have swore Malcolm died during this, but I was just way off. I totally. He only has like one more oh, scene, no. and then he's done. I remember him surviving and kind of like going into the shadows like that uh, at the end. But um, yeah, I, I guess um, you know, he like Dreyfus just straight up fucking suicide bombs himself. Um. You know, I'm saving the human race, uh, which is, you know, it's it's no, it's a uh, uh, noble, you know, it's a noble cause. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I I feel like there's something. I don't know what you're hoping to achieve here, though. Yeah, like, that's so. that's what I'm saying. It's like, dude, you could have waited to do this, you know, and, and you knowing that you're the leader, and now you've just left a group leaderless and in shambles with a broken tower is like not the way to win the situation at all because not only does it not kill all the apes it doesn't even cripple the tower like and they're right. apes dude they can just jump on <laughs> they'll just jump off yeah, to just, another one yeah like, you know. like i mean grant it might be, take them a minute you know but they'll, they'll make it um but uh this is just one of those situations of like you know in any godzilla movie the human part is the weaker part but it has to be in there because mm-hmm. we need attachment whatever Right. Um, it doesn't really ding the movie for me or anything like that because um, I don't see Dreyfus as like the primary antagonist or anything like that. I think he's just trying to do what he feels is necessary. Um, but if if, if um, Dreyfus was a more significant character and this is the way he went out, I'd be I'd be pissed. Right. Yeah. I I definitely I definitely would be too if this were if this if this were the way Koba went out and you're like what the fuck, um and you know there is something kind of about 
Dreyfus that gives me those Timothy McVeigh vibes, you know, like the Oklahoma City bomber. Like he definitely gives me the Timothy McVeigh vibes. Um, oh, oh, oh! One of the characters, one of the gods, was named McVeigh. The one, one oh, of the two that, yeah. that he shoots, that's that right. shoots, and I caught onto it, and I'm just like, oh, that's hmm. funny. <laughs> uh, but like you said, Koba gets dropped like a like a bag of a uh, bag of hammers, um, and we see a new dawn rising on our on our eight friends. Um, certainly the dawn of the planet of the apes over there yeah certainly the rise of the dawn and the beginning of the early concept of the prestige of the concept <laughs> of planet of the apes i i gotta be honest i still that's the one gripe i have about these movies is i was just like why couldn't you just call it dawn of the apes rise of the apes war for the apes and it's like just like more of the planet of the dynasty of the tribute to the seven you know it's like <sighs> i hate like because you know what do we all do do we actually go war for the planet we go war we go rise. Yeah. We say, right. you know, dawn. We know Kingdom. we shorthand it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It just seems, I, and I get it. It's in line with the original movies, but it just seems so silly to me. But um, we get this great kind of final scene with uh, Malcolm and Caesar. You, you have to leave now, everyone. The military's on its way. Uh, if you don't go, it's going to be an all out war. And Caesar says, war has already started. Yeah. It, it was, you know, it's, it's done. And I love yep. the fact that Kobe Woody Harrelson's sh- coming. Yeah. Well, and that Koba shadow still, it, it's one of the first things they talk about in the third movie. It's like, I did not start this war, but the ape that did is dead, you know, and I don't want anything to do with you. And it's like, but ultimately it's, it's still, it's, it's too, it's too little, you know, too little, too late. Uh, and, and Koba is already the balls. He just already set that in motion. Um, and he tells him, you must go before fighting begins. Um, it's a great scene. I like the fact that we, you know, we, we, we do actually kind of see them both regret, you know, the fact that they could not make this work. And it was just what both of them really, really wanted. Uh, you know, as I, I, I love the line. I thought we had a chance. Um, it reminds me of, there's a great song by the 1975 called, I'd uh, love it if we make it. And it's just a song, like, I'd love it if we made it like as, as people. And it's a, it's a really, really interesting song. It, it definitely pertains a lot to, to this kind of moment of like, ah, I thought we could make it. Um, and we, we see the dawn rise and that's pretty much our movie. You know, we get, we get the, uh, you know, again, the staple kind of shot of this trilogy of, of the, the, the eyes uh, closing on Caesar, um, I thought for sure his wife or one of those kids was going to die. I was super surprised by the end of this when they were all still alive. Really surprised in all honesty. Um, but that's it, baby. That's Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. That's Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, man. What a what a film, honestly. Um, yeah, I, I I absolutely adore this movie. Um, I think I think. I think Raves did such a fantastic job bringing this movie into the popular culture, um, and I, I don't think we talk about this movie and its sequel enough. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like in terms of just like a la- being a landmark film in science fiction, in the conversation of tr- perfect trilogies, in the conversation of um, special effects. You know, people always you know go to Avatar or whatever, but like I think. I am more impressed by this than Avatar sometimes. Um, and, yeah, I, you know, just performance capture, motion capture. Um, but not even that. It's an incredibly strong script. Um, like, I think Cobra is just such a three-dimensional villain. Um, I think the way he goes about executing his plan um, is is really, really solid and interesting. And there is not a missed moment in this movie um this is my final thoughts by the way uh, mm-hmm. yeah there's not a there's not a missed moment in this movie i think it's just absolutely perfect this, this is the dark night <laughs> to use a famous uh i guess um hyperbole this is the dark night of this trilogy um but yeah actually you know what that kind of fits this is the dark night of this trilogy dark night rises is war i still like it but i don't love it and begins is you know, rise, which is which we both recognize is really solid. So, I I would I would swap the 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 two, but yeah, I'd say this is definitely the Dark Knight. I feel like Batman mm. Begins is definitely War, and Dark Knight Rises is Rise. And, you know, and not to say that they are similar in terms of quality, but Rise of the Planet of the Apes and the Dark Knight Rises 
feel like the outliers. Like they feel like the ones that are different from the other two. Um, and Batman begins more so just in terms of the way it looks, but the way the third one feels is very like, yeah, this didn't feel like the dark Knight did, but, um, yeah, I, I love this movie. I really enjoy talking about this. Uh, I think that there's plenty of meat on the bone left for this franchise. You know, I'm glad they didn't do, you know, Transformers or Fast and Furious and just run this thing into the ground and diminishing returns and lowest common denominators. I just, I like the fact that they didn't do that. Um, And that there are more stories of this kind of world to be told. There's statues of Caesar in the sixties films. So like there are plenty of stories to be told, um, you know, not just with, Caesar, but with Cornelius, with with their kind of, uh, you know, it doesn't always have to be, um, you know, Anakin, Luke, and and Kylo. You know, you kind of go sideways with it and see the other kind of characters that we had in this world, and what are some of the things that really put the nail in humanity's coffin at the very end. I think there's plenty of meat on this bone, and I think this is a, a fantastic movie that I've quite frankly sucked off enough. So I think we are going to jump out of here. Uh, Big suck fest. This yeah. Week. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. I I've had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, do you got anything else you want to say before we get out of here? No, that's pretty much it, man. We're off to cover uh, Tucker and Dale versus evil um, on the bonus feed. So come join us over there, man. Patreon.com forward slash midnight double feature. A hundred percent. Um, and oh, uh, one last thing. We've been through hell together. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know we had a lot of fun talking about it. Uh, again, if you want to check out our socials, they're going to be there in the show notes. You can find pretty much everything at midnightdoublefeature.com or patreon.com slash midnightdoublefeature. Uh, that would really help us out a lot. And especially stop by and rate and review the show. That helps us out. It's 100% free. It takes you five seconds to give us five stars, and it helps the show out tremendously. Uh, So, guys, we really hope you enjoyed this episode. I know we had a lot of fun recording it, and we will catch you on the next one. Bye. Bye.